Go, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, I ain't saying nothing there. <laughs> Hold on, let's set the timer at sixty Joe. seconds. See if I can get to carry the conversation for sixty seconds, Joe. Timer starts now. Oh, Welcome, all. All right, Good. there you go. Nice. Okay, that's thirty seconds already. Come on, Joe. You didn't, you didn't start talking yet. Come on, Joe. You got to practice your public speaking. Public we, speaking. We is talked for... about this backstage, remember? <laughs> Get out of here. You, you said you laughed awkwardly when you had butterflies in your tummy. I do. Speaking of butterflies, here we go. I have one. That's what not creepy at all. The hell is going on at your house? Check out my stuffed toys right there. I would like. I would like not even show that. <laughs> I don't care. You just see the bodies downstairs. Yeah. Yeah, like God, I got on the... a back bag. Of, you, you said uh, Friends entrance. That'd be kind of cool. Open up with the Friends music one day. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be there for you. It's a good I idea. Look, I look super white on the YouTube, but not on our screen. Why is that? What's your contrast? Con that is true. That is true. You do look like that on YouTube. You are really white. Yeah, that's true. I mean, can you turn down your gain, please? Yeah, let me check if I can fix that for you, Adam. Put a little makeup on my skin, will you? <laughs> here, let's, uh, yeah, like you got some spray tan. You can let me lower run it down off it. here. Maybe that's a little bit better. Wait, you're still white. Let me see what else we can do. Hmm. Hmm. I can de-white you, maybe. De-white as much as possible, let please. Let me see if I can do this for you. We can also make you black and white. Hmm. And that'll be kind of good. Maybe like that's... an old-timey HVAC show. Yeah. Interesting. Do that. Got your boiler here. Got your boiler to you. Do it. Valve. Turn black and white. It would have stayed black and white. It would be like uh, HVAC <laughs> film noir. Mm -hmm. It'd be uh, one of those silent films, though. I see here, guy. Yeah. Just. just see here, and the what for, and the what has it, and what who's it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice suck. <laughs> Exactly, That's the only one who can stuff. master the old time you speak. Yeah. All you gotta do is take all the, uh, y'all use your mid ranges only. You know, that's what they used back then. I guess it was the microphones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they all sound the same, right? Yeah, I think this is how the recordings went on some of their stuff. Mm -hmm. Boy, this is exciting. <laughs> this is super, super groundbreaking exciting. material. <laughs> I like to start with a bang. <laughs> So, uh, Joe, you were just telling us, you were getting Yo. started to tell us about how you messed up big time this week, like huge, massive. It well, it wasn't a big time, but it's a mistake that you learn from, and I corrected it right away because I noticed when I did a startup on these two boilers, um, I sent some pictures to Zach. <laughs> 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 what a guy. like the spotlight right on me. Is there somebody tickling your feet, Joe? What's going on? Here? <laughs> no, no. Tell your story. <laughs> this is the spotlight's on you because this is your story, Joe. No kidding, right? But it's not on the other screen. It's not on the live screen. It will be in a second. Oh, oh it is. Okay. Yeah, it'll oh, catch it up. There's a lag. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Don't forget, we are live. So I did a start. Yeah, you're right. So I did a startup on these two boilers. I installed their a setup. I did, and. um on my low loss header loop, I show the pictures of Zach. Maybe you could put them up. You know how you have the, how do I explain it? It's almost like a, the header, how it, it cycles on one side and you have it open on the other side, right? I can't see you guys. I can't talk to you guys. I, so <laughs> he's putting up your pictures. Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, so what happens was my boiler on my well, left. Hold on, side, hold on a second. Can you zoom zoom in on the BX, please? 
I, I'd rather not. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> because people have a certain image of Joe that I so prefer to the, shatter. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a setup <laughs> I did. And you see my branches off that go to my header on the side of the garage or on the right side, and I'm open on that end. So my left side boiler, this was before I put that valve on the left side, and I still might not do it, but I'm going to try that. It's short cycling. It's going to, It's just going like a like a circle. You know what I mean? It's not forced to go to the right side and exchange heat on that right side. So it's kind of like just doing the shorter path. And it's just short cycling. Picture that valve on the left side, not there. It was like closed before. So it was just short, you know, short enough. And it was got, got So one boiler was high, let's say high temp. The other boiler was fine. And that was the reason. So I had to switch it. I closed it on that end and open it on the left side. It's a little mistake. Why, why did you why why'd you connect it on the left side anyway? Well, you force it. You you, you want to have like a low loss setting. You want like a, a better. It's better heat uh, transfer, right? Like that, right? You don't do that. You keep it open. I've kind of changed the way I pipe things over the years. Yeah, it's it's fun. To, I th- I look at it. it works perfect for me. It's it helps out with heat transfer and it, it forces it forces the circulation to go in a loop instead of just short cycling quicker. So let's say um, if it's open right now, let's say that's closed right now because it's just snow melt. I got away with it. I might get away with it with the valve. I put in the valve there, but let's say I have other things and I close them off. Then my temperature is going to rise big time because it's, it's not cycling through if it's not closed, right? Adam, if it's open, what's going to happen, right? It's going to heat up. Do you have any close ups of the piping? No. I have a picture of the valve that I changed, how I changed it to the right side with the BX. I don't know if you showed that one. With the BX? Yeah, with the BX. Oh, yeah, it's a great view of the BX. And all of, <laughs> all of his contactors, which are not relays. Or are they? <laughs> he said, "This guys, this is a homemade relay panel. I said, those look like contactors to me, boy. <laughs> homemade contactor panel. <laughs> yeah. That's a big deal, man. That was a big fight right there. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I was making my contact or panel. I don't. Know, I I can't. I don't know why I can't call them to relays. And I'm like, okay, fine. Man, they are relays, man. Hmm. It's a relay. You know, I'm not even sure if I'm qualified to even ask questions about this because it's yeah. all nuts to me. But so this system right here, all those um, glycol loops or or whatever they are, is yeah. it glycol or just straight water? It's no, it's glycol. It's why I do fifty fifty. Okay, so those go into the driveway, right, for snow melt? Is that what yes. you said? Yeah. So what controls the temperature? It's a slab sensor. Oh, okay. Yeah. So and that's... Here's a here's a dumb question. Slab yeah. sensor, there's a sensor in the cement slab? You got it. Is well, it? Like, but it's exposed, right? It's, it's, it's just, very it's, tough. So you put in, when they're pouring the driveway, you put in a socket, and it's basically like a, <laughs> a metal cup, right? What do you yeah. describe it as, Joe? Like an Aquastat? It's a sensor that's very expensive. Um, like yeah, the bulb on an Aquastat that just goes in a well that's inside the pipe for a boiler system? Uh, not really. No. It's, like it's, a, more... it's like a cup you put in the driveway that has a feed into the boiler room, and then you mm. drop your sensor into it, basically. Okay. Yeah. So you, if it goes bad, you can easily replace it without jackhammering up the slab? Yes. Okay. But the trick is you don't want to open line inside that little compartment because you could get water in there you have to fish it all the way out from where it's going and then pull it out put it back in hmm. yeah how long does the setup like that take from like start to finish i know you probably have general contractor general contractors and i don't know whoever else involved is it just like you and a cement guy or you and oh yeah you know? the landscapers general contractor they deal with all that so i tell them um they border all up Let's say, let's say they make borders all along the driveway. And then I know from, I guess, my experience, how far to stay away from certain things. Or I go with go over it with the general contractor to ask them, where should we stay stay away from? Maybe, maybe they don't want it as close to some areas because they have special flowers being planted there. Um, maybe they're putting railings, so they don't want to, there's no, there's no need for them. And that's it. You just put it in. So and obviously, and you say like, you put them like roughly around nine inch centers apart. You don't want to go more. A lot of guys go more 12 inches, but save the hassle, callbacks, just do nine-inch centers. Interesting. Yeah. And all that pipe going on, there, it looks like it's all pecs. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, 
I assume PEX also doesn't have any sort of uh, expansion contracting with the with the weather. It does, but it's very minute and it's not as it's much ve- as copper wood. No, mm. no, and it's strong stuff. It's so I don't know what to rate it for, but like this, a cement slab is going right on top of it, so it's pretty durable. Right. Yeah, so it doesn't oval out, you think, or flatten out with that weight on top of it? Nope. Nope. Uh, it nice. takes a lot. Now, when you, uh, I am just made of questions right now, but uh, when you're actually pouring the slab and those PEX lines, are they, I assume you have to elevate them off of the, I don't know, the, the base or whatever you're pouring the cement on, right? What you do is we put, or the last gear, it's whoever, how we work out the deal. Either I put, let's say, a membrane, let's say, a, 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 an R value insulation underneath. Insane in the membrane. Yeah. So obviously the heat transfer is going high, not low. Mm-hmm. And then that's it. You put the tubes on top of there and you tie them with, uh, there's two different methods. There's, I don't know what the styrofoam method is called. I don't know. These guys might know, but we are usually you, use. Are you talking about those big staples? Yeah. This, no, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's right. It looks like Lego, the styrofoam oh, stuff. Um, oh, those uh, thermal, what are they called? I don't know. Therm, panel therm or thermal panel? Yeah. We just put on top of like this the cage. It's like this uh, steel cage. What do they call them? Uh, not cage, but uh, mesh, wire mesh. Mesh, yeah, wire mesh. And we just tie it to there, hmm. and that's it. You calculate accordingly, put as many manifolds as you want or need, and you hope for the best. So How far, do you it's do a pretty good calculation on a driveway. Mm-hmm. That's a good I question, said, right? Yeah, it is a good question. I know roughly how much you could say CFM goes to a certain size of pipe. So I go from that and how much GPM I have to use for mm-hmm. how many square feet. And I just do my what is it? Would that you, way. Isn't it like 100 BTUs for every square foot or something like that? No, it's that? more. I go more. I go about 200. But you don't take into account, let's say, different areas would have a, uh, a different average snowfall or different temperatures. Do you take that into account? No, I just go max out, bud. Balls mm-hmm. to the wall. Just like just put your thumb in your mouth and hold it up in the wind and be like, yeah, that's <laughs> hundred thousand BTUs. Well, yeah, you just want you you want to you, you want max. There's, there's no reason why you can't go more in a certain. I don't want to melt the tires on my car though. If I'm you, parking, you won't. The you won't. Because remember, you can also adjust it through the thermostat too, right? And your boiler heat. Mm-hmm. But you won't do that. That won't happen. So is that boiler system only go to the driveway? It doesn't do anything else with the yeah. house. For this system, just the driveway, but there are systems that you use it for a couple other things. You can nice. use it for a domestic exchanger. You can use it for uh, floor warming in the house. You can use it for a few things. What's a what's a price tag on something like that? That job alone, I would say that uh, garage, it's up into the uh, $80,000 range. Yeah, that's less than what I thought. I was thinking what's a couple hundred grand. What's the square footage on the driveway? Square footage, yeah, you, you're close to there. Um, it's around there. Uh, Bill depends. Um, that one's, I think, fif, uh, 52, 5,500 square feet. Nice. Yeah. Pretty cool. But yeah, that's so that's the correction I had to make because when I did a startup, my left boiler was just heating up. And my right side was fine. Yeah. Joe, rookie sent over $2 for you to get a new hat. (laughs) Thanks, rookie. You can buy three hats with that in Canada. Oh, I wish. That's that's American money, Joe. Yeah, that's American dollars. (laughs) Like three hats and those, what do you call them? Looney toonies? The loonies, whatever. Yeah. Loonies and toonies. Loonies and toonies. I have one. No, I don't have one on me. Four loonies and a toonie. Four loonies. Very nice. Anybody else do anything fun today? Or this week, rather? Not much. I started working on that. Uh, remember I called you, Joe, a couple weeks ago? I'm like, what do you think about this? That steam humidifier? Yeah. Started yeah. doing that today. Ran out of parts twice. Uh, of course. You're just making it yourself, right? So it's kind of hard to judge what you need. Yeah. So. A steam humidifier? I've never Yeah, I want to explain what, you got, what, you're, what you're thinking of. I think it's a great idea. It'll work. So what are those... Uh, do, Joe, maybe, yeah. well, you probably don't. You work in rich people's houses, but April Air makes a humidifier that's like a power humidifier, but it's ducted. So it has its own fan, 
and then you run ductwork to it and you basically run a floor vent and it blows right into the house it's for houses that don't have ductwork that you can get to or boilers or whatever i don't know i can't remember the number on it but uh there's a few companies that make the same similar ones too like general air makes one too as well right. anyways this house yeah. is a monster house how big do you think the house is justin it's it's huge. It's I don't over know. over five thousand square. Foot. I was about to say it's probably six thousand square foot. Wow. Uh, but they had three of these humidifiers hanging in the basement, and they ducted them all into like a eight by twelve duct, and then there was two registers going up to the first floor. Um, the guy I bought the house is a foreclosure, and uh, he had me check everything out. Well, none of the humidifiers. Well, maybe one of them was working out of the three. At least two of them weren't working. And he's like, what should I do? Should I just change all three? I'm like, why don't we just rip these out and put a steam humidifier in, you know? Um, the problem is he's not gutting the first floor. I was going to do, what are the, what is the April air? They call it like a fan pack or something? Yeah, right? it's, it's it's a fan kit that you can buy with the, the April. I think it's the April air 800 series, which is the steam humidifier. And then you can buy the, I forget the number on it, but it's like a fan kit or something like that they call it that you can buy with it that you run your steam hose up and to it, it and it's got a little fan in it and it's it got a little fan in it right it's like a register that you mount to a wall that's the issue you get you have to run it to a wall okay um so he already has these holes cut into a marble floor and he's not anticipating ripping open the wall and all that so what i thought to do is run a run ductwork from one vent, run it to an inline uh, duct booster, inline fan, and then come out of that into a square duct, run the steam tube into that, and then come out of that and wrap around and back up into the first floor. So instead of sucking basement air in, using three crappy humidifiers, you're using first floor air, running it through and blowing back up. But yeah, yeah. pretty neat idea. It, it ended up, it, it's kind of like, stupid for wiring it ended up being a little bit more i mean it wasn't bad but it was just like so the guy has a nest humidifier he wants that to control the the uh or nest thermostat he wants that to control the humidifier so obviously the nest is powered with the transformer on the boiler okay so that's sending 24 volts through the star terminal back over to where the humidifier is at well, so what I did was I took one of those RIB relays and energized that relay with the common and the, uh, you know, the star terminal. Mm -hmm. And then what that did was close, it closed the terminals for RNG on a double throw uh, fan center. And then I used that to turn on the fan and close the, uh, the terminals on the humidifier. <laughs> yeah. But it was like I, every time I, I'm like, okay, this is what I need to do to wire it. And then I'm like, oh, I forgot this. Oh, I forgot this. <laughs> it's just a freaking hodgepodge of wires now, you know? And are you setting up any, I, I think I asked you this, any manometer setup or? Um, like you... I, I'm using the, uh, what is it? Uh, White Rogers 0700 air proving switch or whatever it is. Yeah. Something. Yeah, cool. That's a good yeah. idea. Just so if there's no air movement, move, movement. Right. You know, hmm. that's a cool idea. I think it's pretty cool. Thanks, Joe. I have no idea what you guys are talking about right now. <laughs> no idea. I'll, I'll have a picture next week. I got to go back and I ran out of sheet metal at like 3.30 today. I'm like, eh. literally until now, I've never even heard of a steam humidifier. Wow. What? Well, obviously, you don't watch Joe's videos because <laughs> like three out of four videos are about steam humidifiers. Are they? <laughs> oh, man, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> I, just did a, I just did some service on a big one the other day. It was going I to turn my notifications on, Joe. When was the last time you made a video? I swear, like, it, <laughs> like when I go was it last week? Maybe it's, it's been slowing down a bit. It's been too crazy, but I will pick it up if some stuff's going on. Right. But yeah, it was a big humidifier, a steam humidifier, going to a big makeup air system in a in a like a big building. And the uh, contractor called me. He's like, "Oh, there's a leak," and he was very vague about the leak. I'm like, "Leak? Okay." And and, and so I go there. I'm like, look, I didn't know where to start. So I went from looking in where the manifold was in the, in the makeup air. Then I went to the unit and I, f I found the leak and I just fixed it essentially. Those are, that's, a, that's, uh, those are Nortex, right? Nortex. Yeah. Or what's the other word? Uh, 
they changed company name. They kind of went to Condare, Condare in Architex. Huge, 200,000 almost BTU, 100,000 BTUs each burner. So, and there's two sides of those four banks. That's, that's a lot of BTUs there. But it's for common areas, right? Makeup air system, common, maybe outside perimeters, big space. They really care about their tenants in that building. Yeah. They do. Nice. nice. Yeah. Hmm. The uh, that school. See, this is gonna be all about roast Joe Day. Cause you guys, you guys always bug me saying I, I say no mistakes. Today's gonna be a roast day for me, you right? Yeah, I say no mistakes. Yeah, I don't. Say <laughs> um, the school. I got a call back in the school, but this, I, I'm backpedaling again. It's not really my fault, but they said there's a leak on my humidifier, that the one that I, I installed that power pack. So I went back. I'm like leak what's leaking then i realized i think it, zach might have a picture of this i sent it over chat or somewhere and uh what was happening is <laughs> this... how big is that <laughs> zach know. might have a picture of this it's... i put it on the internet four years ago he might have it with him <laughs> come on it was not too long ago um the steam was hitting the sprinkler line and it's right next to it, it was like right below it this is 40 feet up. So anyways, the steam from the power pack was hitting the sprinkler line, obviously cold sprinkler line. And it was condensing. It was dripping, I guess, whatever. So I'll offer you know, it to like the line. I had a similar issue, except almost the exact opposite. Because there was a uh, sprinkler line that ran through a, a walk-in freezer, and they kept complaining that it was condensing. Mm -hmm. But I think the main issue was where the actual uh, pipe penetrated through the wall of the uh, walk-in freezer. There was no insulation around it. So Most likely. Warm air going here. I tried to explain it to the maintenance guy. I wasn't there to fix that. I was just there to look at an oven or something stupid. And he had mentioned that to me. So. And cor correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, but walk-ins are usually under positive pressure, right? Mm, well, if they're sealed up completely there. No, no. I mean, because there's nothing bringing in outside air. It's, it's just, I would, I don't know, what would you call it? Like a neutral pressure? Yeah. I, so. I mean... It's yeah, okay. if you like, let's say if you put something warm inside there all of a sudden, then you close the door, then you're going to create a little bit of a suction as that, um, uh, as that hot air cools down, I guess. Um, but no, that's a good question, actually. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, I wouldn't it, think there would be any kind of, yeah, pressure. there shouldn't be any pressure changes. I mean, unless there's a, a some sort of pressure issue in the building, gotcha, because it's a completely sealed box, so no, it shouldn't be anything. The reason why I was just I was wondering and asking is because I had a couple situations with um, owners calling me at these big houses or even small condos and big pool areas, and sometimes they're under positive pressure. And what's happening is they're getting, let's say, condensation around the light sockets or uh, certain places, and wondering what is going on. And it just happened two years later. So I go, yeah. The reason why it's happening two years later is because eventually it getting wet. Unwet, wet, unwet, you're losing that R value on the insulation around that light socket, and now you're getting water. And that's because they're under positive pressure. And I was just, just kicked off another thing in my head. Hmm. So obviously, essentially, you, you fix that pressure uh, issue, and you want to make a negative pressure in that room, if anything, and uh, you go, go from there. You're talking about like a pool room? So that's what I was just asking. Yeah, yeah, but that humidity hmm. and all that fancy stuff. Yeah. Now, you're talking about a pool that room. That could be issue too, rookie. With a walk-in cooler or something? No. Oh, no I'm not following you right here. No, uh, it's it's just uh, a pool room, essentially. It's just with pressure. And I was just wondering, when you when you mentioned about that hole and insulation, I was just, it just went to a different way. That's all. <clears throat> now, when you do pool rooms, Joe, like, the whole point is to use a positive pressure, right? Or no, you negative. want a negative pressure because yeah. you don't want, like, the chemicals leaching out into other areas, right? Yeah, you don't want the pool air, the chemicals, the humidity. You don't want it to go into the, the room, the other rooms, right? You want so actually it, negative. Is there some negative. sort of uh, exhaust on these pool rooms? Well, yeah, that's what I install. I install, like, just a little exhaust just to keep it negative. And I, I you know, just fish lock it to the, uh, let's say, uh, the return duct and exhaust it outside. Just a small thing, small CFM, and just keep it negative pressure. You're safe that way. But when it gets to colds and condominiums and big buildings, they want their fresh air coming in and they want their exhaust going out. They just want some kind of fresh air. But if I can, I try to get away from it. You try to get away from bringing in the fresh air? 
Yeah. Oh. And, and, and if it's there, I try to limit it. Like, there's no reason why he needs to bring so much fresh air in. Honestly. Hmm. So interesting. Yeah. So interesting. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, mm. like a library book. Yeah. So, speaking of pools, can you show us a couple of your pool toys behind you? Yeah, your floaties. <laughs> I don't got any floaties. You know what I mean? Up in the up, like right above your right shoulder there in the corner. Um, on the on your totes. Because it looks I, like you live in a storage container. I got Larry, Larry the dog. Oh, they're named. Okay, this should oh, be good. Yeah. I got Cindy this, the Cindy the monkey. This is so that's much more than that's a land. That's a land. That is not a freaking monkey. Damn it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, Zach disappeared. He's like, oh, I don't want to be part of this. <laughs> this guy's over called Lamb's monkey. So. My bad. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I got I to gotta look in them science books you Canadians got over there. <laughs> <laughs> over know, right? here, we feed lambs and bananas. <laughs> what else you got, I, Joe? Show us, um, show us your stash. We got Barbara the... What are these called? Don't tell me. Monkeys. Well, that looks like no, a grizzly monkey. bear. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a... Dodo bird. Dodo bird. That's a good one. No, no, no. They're it's a different flamingo color. Flamingo, right? for the love of God. It's a flamingo. <laughs> oh, flamingo. That's was, what it is. I was going to say crawfish. Did you Does put those boilers in yourself? Sorry? <laughs> Did you put all that piping in yourself? Because you ought to know what a flamingo <laughs> oh <my> is. <laughs> <laughs> I was over here working all these freaking boilers and snow melt and all this. <laughs> Crap. It'd be, it'd and the dude spilled. doesn't know a lamb from a monkey and doesn't <laughs> know what a can't look at a pink bird and automatically think flamingo. Flamingo, I know. I know. Yeah. It's Maybe weird. one of the well, skilled trade up he questions. Doesn't, he, he doesn't have Vegas that he can rely off of. That's you true. Know? That's true. What about the Vegas. monkey one though? Yeah. The monkey? Uh, hard to mess up a lamb and a monkey. That's, That's true. true. Come on. It was kind of furry. I had the same ears. You imagine the movie called Planet celebrate, of the Lambs. Do they celebrate <laughs> Easter in Canada? No, Adam. We don't celebrate Easter. <laughs> they have books on evolution. <laughs> yeah. Heathens over there, man. In the early days, there was a lamb. <laughs> no, it was a monkey. Nobody knows. Men evolved from lambs. <laughs> Jeez, rookie. All right. Any other good, no, anyways, I want to. Any other good stories? Decorations, yeah. Holy shit, was that a um, good story? I know, right? <laughs> it was a <laughs> <great> story. <laughs> it's, it, listen, I either dress it up or put a tarp. I had some niece and nephew toys in here. So, I, well, I say they're my niece and nephew, so I'm joking. And I just put them up there as a joke. You don't no, really have a niece or a nephew, do you? <laughs> no, I don't, Bell. No. <laughs> What room are you in right now, Joe? I'm just curious now. Is it your garage or? No, no. It's like an office room. Is it? Yeah. It's like a storage room or something? Kind of. Okay. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Well, I guess uh, speaking of uh, stories this week or whatever, uh, the only thing really, I didn't really do much interesting. The only thing, I had a heat exchanger. Um. Basically, another company told a guy that his heat exchanger was bad. Um, I don't know, Adam. Correct me if I'm wrong. They tell him it wasn't under warranty, or it was under warranty, or oh, they told him he needs it needs to buy a new furnace. Yeah, he did, Long story short, heat exchanger is under warranty. All he has to pay for is labor. Um, so we went ahead and got the heat exchanger just in case it needed it, and I went out there to pull the heat exchanger. Um, and thoroughly check it. Uh, come to find me and Jesus went out there, pulled the whole heat exchanger out. Nothing, dude. Like pristine, not any surface rust, no holes, no cracks, no nothing. And uh, needless to say, he wasn't real happy. Um, so, yeah, I had that, gained a customer. And then I run a call back on myself. Um, mm -hmm. So, you're not the only one, Joe. Um, <laughs> I went, I guess it was a little over a week ago, 
Uh, this lady's got just a basic run of the mill bypass humidifier. <coughs> and the humidistat was bad. Yeah. Um, what, do, what do they call that humidistat, Adam? The one that's uh, the uh, automatic. bypass or power. The um, automatic. It's like the there's two types of automatic April air or whatever. It's the the dial or the digital one. Mm. You know? Yeah. I hate those dials. To be so, well, it was it's one of the dial ones. Mm. And I had 24 volts coming in. And you could turn the dial, you know how you can turn the dial all the way up to test or reset humidifier pad. Um, you could turn it all the way up to the call was she was, it had low humidity in the house. Mm. So I go out there, try to test it, turn it all the way to test. And I had 24 volts coming in, but it w even in test, it would not pass the 24 volts to the water solenoid valve and open up, you know, open up the water to the humidifier. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, whatever. And it, it needs a new humidistat. So I go back this week um, and put a new one on. Wire it up, lottie dotty, put it on freaking test, passes power, water solenoid valve opens up, and you think, okay, great, everything's good. Set it at 40%, got out of there. Um, perfect example of thinking, you know, not looking at the whole picture, not checking everything, assuming everything else is good. Um, big, big picture diagnosis. Big mm -hmm. picture diagnosis. Big picture. Oh, yep. So she calls back the next day, um, leaking water in the floor. Mm. And uh, I get out there and find that so you know how you know there's different ways to wire those up on this one they had a secondary transformer that's supposed to get its power from eac on the board right okay instead of them getting power from eac on the board they had it wired straight to the switch on the furnace so that little secondary auxiliary transformer, whatever you want to call it, had 24 volts to it all the time because it had power to it all the time. So that humidifier Before could you know, come yeah. on even when the furnace wasn't running, yeah. even when you had no blower. Um, totally overlooked that, didn't think nothing about it. And uh, so then when I went back out there, I uh, ended up having to fix the wiring or whatever where it only come on with the furnace. and. Um, and the uh, the water pad, the little bracket that holds the water panel in, you know, back it had fallen forward. So oh. when it would dump water on the top of the panel, it just dumped out of the front door of the bypass. Yeah. So Any idea put, how it got miswired? I have no idea. I, I don't. I don't know who put that one in. But yeah, instead of instead, they put it on the switch on the side of the furnace. You know, like most people do. And instead of going on in the furnace and tying into EAC, they just wired it straight in the switch with the line voltage coming into the furnace. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, that's awesome. It's funny. <laughs> Big picture diagnosis is now trademarked by yes. Chris Stefanovich. Just the next time I you mean, say that, we, we got to quote it. Listen, I, I, like any kind of like uh, IAQ product that you have, high end furnaces, um, communicating not communicating staged equipment or whatever you always got to read the manual you know like there's so many different things that are wired differently and mm -hmm. then take april air as an example they have changed their wiring and humidistats in the last 10 years probably like six times you know yeah. so it's still basically the same thing but they switch over to a new humidistat oh this humidistat you got to run power and then jump it over to hume or whatever this one you don't yeah, you always gotta just make sure if you're not familiar with it, read the freaking manual. You know. Yeah. Hmm. Moral hey. of the story: Don't get in a hurry. Check the simple stuff. Hey, going back to your heat exchangers, there. I had a question for you. When you guys are replacing heat exchangers, do you ever check your incoming and outgoing gas pressure before or after any any part of the process of changing that heat exchanger? I, I try to make a habit of of checking gas pressure pretty regularly, especially. Yeah. Especially, change heat exchanger. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got I a bad think, habit of not doing that. And I, I realized that. <laughs> I think I, I never a, used to to if, Bill, as well, Bill. If you have a bad heat exchanger, I think you should really look at everything. You yeah, know? yeah. airflow, sure. everything. airflow, gas pressure, everything. 
Yeah. Well, I recently had a train that had a, it must have been three years old, had a cracked heat exchanger. And and that's where I kind of realized that, you know what? I haven't really been checking gas pressure on these. And gas pressure turned out to be fine on that one. I really don't know what caused that heat exchanger to crack, but um, yeah, it's kind of an odd one. Maybe yeah, I'll double check when I go back out there. Because sometimes, I don't, I'm not real sure what it is, but sometimes in my market, I do find that gas pressure tends to fluctuate. Like one day it'll be right in the ballpark of, you know, 3, 3.5. And then some days it's, you know, closer to 5. I'm okay. not sure really what causes that, but uh, I've seen it at a couple different locations. Hmm. Holy crap. Hmm. Yeah. Holy crap is right. What's that? Where are you? There. Get in here. What? Get in here. Tell us some of your heat exchangers experience. Uh, this is the South. Yeah, there's, there's no <laughs> heat exchangers down there. Which one do you <laughs> want to hear about? What, the one or the He's other got one? Gas there. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Got heat exchangers. It's not exciting, though. We're just no exciting yeah. stories. The only heat exchange like, they have going on is people cuddling. Yeah, there's an exchange <laughs> of heat. Maybe later. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, How often do you check static pressure? Where did hmm, that come the, from? What is that? Uh, from the chat. Every day, man. No, no, on, your house, on your house, Jen, yeah, Zach, I just, just kind of walk house. around with the meter going, there's no <laughs> pressure in this room. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure in this room. I had a heat exchanger story, but then we all went off of it. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I want to hear it. I was just going to say that ours are airflow related. There's usually not enough airflow, and it causes yeah. them to crack. Hmm. I think that's, that's not really probably story. most of them. Yeah. There's Furnace a tech tip. oversized, ductwork is undersized, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's like we got like a 20 bait and let's put a 100,000 BTU furnace on it. It'll be fine. <laughs> the air is very hot. It's working great. Yeah, sure. For five years. Yeah, well, it, unless you got an old ream gas pack. I, I don't know how many ream gas packs you had, Zach, but. Quite a few. No. Those are friggin' notorious. I don't give a crap if the airflow is perfect. Those are notorious for friggin' rusting out. Now, are you talking about the old ones that had the draft motor that blew into the combustion chamber? It had like a draft motor on top of it. It wasn't like a draw through. It was like positive pressure blowing through the chamber. Well, those, but some of the even the ones that that discharge out the like the right front of it or mm -hmm. whatever. Like, yeah. I'm like, those are like. Some of those, like, say, mid-2000s models. I got uh, you, yeah. 04, 05, 06, somewhere in there. I mean, you take the panel off those things, and, like, the freaking burners are rusted <laughs> all to crap. The front plate of the heat exchanger, half of it's rotted out. Like, holy freaking crap. Yeah, that's, that's true, man. Uh, I remember we used to drive down the street. We'd see the older ones that I was talking about. you see some new ones yeah. like you were talking about. And you look at the front of them, and you'd see, like, some rust marks from like that. Yep. So that sucker's definitely cracked. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's too bad they don't call it. And it's still running it. Yeah, it's always running. I had one that was cracked. It's like, man, you can't run this. And it was just a really small hole. And I'm pretty sure that he got it turned back on after I left. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, the old Goodman gas packs, uh, the old brown turds with the freaking clamshell heat exchangers, those are notorious. Mm. Too. Yeah, yeah. That's what it, uh, actually one of the few that actually had to change was one of those because there's yeah. so few of them down here. There's another company that makes those clamshell kind of design ones too. I can't, just can't remember. It was an ICP, I believe. I can't, can't remember. Yeah, I've never changed a residential heat exchanger before. No, I usually you just do? change the unit oh. there, Bill. Yeah. You know, over here, if we know there's a cracked heat exchanger, we got to rag tag them. I have, I guess, the authority to shut off their gas or shut off the gas to that appliance. I'm not going to shut off the whole gas, but shut off the glass to that uh, gas to that appliance. And even in the winter time, safe. Even in the winter time. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Does your company it's, offer anything like an emergency heat service where you temporarily install like a? Well, this was me on. This is me on my my side of the business. We don't really do small houses per se, um, but no, we we don't. <laughs> Here we go. We Here don't. We, go. Do we, don't we don't even answer the phone for those people. <laughs> no, oh my God! I don't mess with that weird <laughs> stuff you uh, some people mess with. A trailer. I, Goodbye. No, I do it. I I don't. Our our it. number is not listed in the phone book. We're <laughs> only listed in the country club hey, news country club. Hey, hey, if man, you need like, a quote, ring, ring, you can't ring, afford ring. us. <laughs> yes, this is Joe. How many square there's feet? Twenty five hundred. End call. <laughs> there's actually a big store here that they're well known for their equipment, like their John Deere's and Kubotas and whatnot. And their slogan is 
bring your wallet. It's pretty funny, and, and, and people have to go. But no, we don't offer a temporary heat. Um, I did carry a couple small heaters if they wanted, but you try to get out as quick as possible. Um, it's dangerous, man. You could die from it, right? Essentially. Yeah, you could. Justin, rookie wants to know if you have an endoscope or a. Uh, I don't know. Endoscope, I don't know if there, is there one? Did you give me one? Because I don't have one. I don't have a. That's right, apprentice. Now. That's right. Boroscope. That's what I've always heard it is. What's is an endoscope? That sounds like something you uh, Goes down don't your enjoy doing. Maybe. Yeah. Endoscopy. Yeah. I, I just had boroscopes. That's an endoscope. <laughs> they, all right. Do you want to hear a story? Sure. Maybe, what time is it? I'll wait until after nine for this story because let's get back on endoscope. It's already after nine over here, so you have to mm. let's see it. No, it's I nine forty nine here. All right. Shannon, oh, no. it's, it's 9.49. But you know that uh, that stuff I was chatting with you guys about earlier today kind of led me down a little bit of an idea about talking about the differences between commercial and residential. Mm -hmm. How the fact of I spent two hours trying to track down somebody who controls the thermostats for this location I was at today. Mm -hmm. Two hours making phone calls, sending emails, just trying to find the person that controls the thermostat for a restaurant that had no heat. Yeah. And what what was the... What was the story behind it? Well, you get a call, no heat in a dining room of a restaurant. It's one of those places, you know, they, they have the meats. And I get there, dining room's 50 degrees. You go upstairs, um, inducers, inducers running, blowers running, open the door, the belt's broken. So it went off on its main limit, right? Reset the resettable limit, put a new belt on there, went back downstairs, cranked the thermostat up to uh, 70. Climb back upstairs, get to the unit. It fires up, runs for about a minute, and then it shuts off. Go back downstairs and look at the thermostat. And this is a train thermostat, XL624. And I look at the thermostat, and the mode had went from heat to off. I, ju I just assumed that maybe somebody walked by and was just pushing buttons on me just to F with <laughs> me. So I was like, all right. Well, I said, put it back in the heat mode, went back upstairs, did the same thing. I ran for about a minute, came back downstairs, off again. So this time, I programmed, I just reprogrammed the entire week. Every day, 72 degrees. And it started heating. It went back upstairs. Again, same thing. Came back downstairs and it was off. So the, the third or fourth time, whatever time I, I'm at now, I just stood there. You know, I watched it. And I, I literally watched it for about three minutes and it would just turn itself off. It would go into heat, run for like a minute or two after its little delay, and it would just turn itself off. So eventually I figured out what happened. I figured out that when they placed the work order for that, it goes through their facility company or their management company, and then that goes to their energy management company. And then that energy management company, I believe what they did is, um, I call it like they sort of red tag in their system where they can go into the controls and they just turn everything off from mm -hmm. their end. Yeah. And once they do that, no matter what I do to the thermostats, it just defaults. It's going to be back, default to what they got. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I was trying to explain it to the manager, the district manager, and neither one of them knew who I needed to talk to. But it literally, it was probably over two hours of trying to find wow. whoever Did controlled that. What was that? Did you find the person? No, no. I, I never found them. Just change the thermostat? Sort of. See, I, I never found them. And I, I started <laughs> running out of what we call NTE. <laughs> so you get yeah. these jobs, and it says you can't go over $500 for the whole job, right? So I'm coming up to about four hours, which is, you know, just about the $500 mark. And I still haven't found anybody. So I'm like, well, I have nothing else to do. So I took and uh, I went to the board of this York unit, unwired, just uh, W12 and uh, green, hooked up a temporary thermostat and dropped it down the return, basically. Sort of changed the thermostat, but I didn't want to take their thermostat off the wall because if I do that and I somehow interrupt their communication system or do anything to fault their communication system that they've been changing then i might uh i might be liable for whatever issue that i created now when justin mentioned about being outsourced uh wi-fi or whatnot wherever that is um like how does that work it's such like i never seen that before on my end oh it's just this one's actually just like a i think it's just a wi-fi thermostat yeah it connects to something like called z wave or something mm -hmm. it's, and uh, nexia Next year. Next year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I even tried to go through the back end of this thermostat and basically 
kick it off the Wi-Fi signal so I could just run yeah. it like in a manual mode, but it wouldn't even let me do that. They had that somehow locked out. Yeah. So I couldn't even do that. But, you know, the thing that really got me thinking about it was talking to Justin earlier. You know, I think he mentioned in the chat, if I had it, should I just go upstairs and talk to the homeowner? Yeah. Well, and that. that's the thing. I mean, I think both sides have their pros and cons, obviously. You know, if you don't yeah. like dealing with people, commercial is awesome. You get to work on, you know, big, intricate stuff. You don't have to deal with people. You work you on know. a roof, you know, for two you or three hours a day. <laughs> work on a roof, whatever. You know, you go do what you got to do. You get it back up and going. It's, you know, built to some corporation or whatever. You roll on to the next one or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the frustrating you know, part is, is when you get up there and like, oh, you know, you, you see what's going on. Your deucer's running. You can hear the blower running, but you can tell it's not actually moving in the air. So you're like, oh, it's a bad belt. Open it up. Sure enough, you know, it's a bad belt. And you're thinking, well, it's Friday. I got a bad belt. I'm going to be home, you know, before, before it's dark out. But no, it's yeah, not the case. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess. So, you know, sometimes it is a pain in the butt to deal with homeowners, you know, depending on who you're dealing with. But with have stuff you, like you know with stuff like that you don't have you don't have to deal with stuff like that <clears throat> you know you go talk face to face with a homeowner maybe even bring them with you take them down to the furnace and show them what's going on mm -hmm. and you come to a solution right there there's none of this well we're gonna have to try to contact you That's know tough. this company blah blah oh, yeah. blah and we'll yeah. be back sometime next week i, I have we to get quote it and then that quote is submitted through the district manager it's passed along to the facility manager who's probably <laughs> right. passed along to the third party uh, energy management company because sometimes depending on the account they also have a say in that year's budget i mean there's down or 10 15 people it's got to go through before i get approval now have you guys have you guys ever had to uh, go service a house like say somebody has a, one of these smart houses and they're like yeah, i'm in florida and my house says it's uh 50 degrees in there you mm -hmm. guys ever have to go service anything like that i have yeah have you mm-hmm how do you do with that? I mean, I assume they have a spare key. They'll, you know, you get in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Most people like that. They either have, uh, you know, they got one of those door locks where they can let you in or mm -hmm. they got a spare key hid somewhere or a neighbor has a key. Hey, let me call my neighbor. I'll have mm -hmm. him come let you in or he's going to meet you there. But when you uh, get there, you can obviously have uh, you contact whoever controls that thermostat or you can control it yourself, I assume. Right. What I one one in particular I could think of, um, he had. What did he have? I think there were nests and he had, he had them locked up cause he used it as a, as a rental property. And I don't remember, I think he was still in Tennessee, but I think he was like way over on the other side of Nashville or something. And this was like his weekend getaway slash rental property. Hmm. Um, and he had certain things set up in the nest. You know, you could only turn it up so high. You could only turn it down so low so that tenants don't go in there playing with thermostats. Um, but, I mean, I just talked to him on the phone and I want to say he gave me the code um, to get into it or whatever. Or maybe I had him unlock yeah. it from his phone. Unlock it from well, his phone. I mean, I would say like with Nest and that, most people don't lock thermostats. And yeah. with like smart thermostats, if you make an adjustment at the thermostat, it will override the adjustment in your phone. Or right. if you make an adjustment in your phone, it will override the thermostat. It's not like this is the master and nothing else matters. You know what I mean? So, yeah, hmm. yeah, not not really much of a not a big issue, Bill. I mean, very rarely is it is it some type of issue, and it's normally not. You know, it's one of those things where you're having to go through different companies and talk to all these different people. Even if you have to get something unlocked through a homeowner and you have mm -hmm. to make a phone call, you make one phone call, and in that case, it's kind of like, well, look, yeah, you know, it's their personal property. Okay, when you're dealing with commercial stuff. They don't really care. They're going to get around to the crap when they get around to the crap because yeah. it doesn't affect them personally. Okay. Where with a homeowner, even if they have to do something, you have to make a conversation over the phone. They're going to get right on it. Either unlock it for you, give you the passcode, whatever. They're going to make it happen because it's their house and they want it fixed. Well, of course. Yeah. So, see, see, when I thought you, when you guys were talking about like uh, outsource Wi Fi, blah, blah, I thought they had like a Wi Fi signal. It's getting to a DC voltage interlocked with a security loop and no matter you can't even change the thermostat or it's, anything it's a basic thermostat that's okay like, that's just, like I think that is the most basic next to thermostat you can get okay right? so, so, so you could just, you could just the, the 624 yeah yeah 
Hmm. Oh, the XL. Yeah. So you essentially you could just limit, like, just cancel out the Wi-Fi or whatever he says, and change the thermostat, and you're good, right? Yeah, but it wouldn't let me cancel the Wi-Fi. Yeah, there's. A, I'm pretty sure there's a setting in those that they can set up to where you, you any any Joe Blow can't go in there and turn the Wi-Fi yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying, if you change the thermostat in general, you could get rid of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, but but it's yeah. gonna give an alert on their end that somebody's messed with. Uh, yeah, and since it was a brand new account, I was like, well, you know, if it was a, a pre existing account that I was more comfortable with, I probably would just yanked it off, put one on there, and <laughs> said, hey, I'll come back when you figure out who controls this. But uh, it is what it is. I uh, about a week or so ago, a uh, a guy that I do a lot of work for, he lives in this handle building, and they have a big steam boiler, and the. Uh, the thermostat is in this old, like 90 some year old lady's apartment and mm -hmm. it drives everyone in the building crazy because certain times she'll turn up to like 78 and other times she'll turn it to like 50 and she's always playing with it all the time. <laughs> so he had me come over there and uh, install one of those Honeywell wireless thermostats and move it up to his unit. And he said, keep hers wired with power just so she thinks she's playing with it. So she's got a thermostat, like what built it. So it looks like she's making adjustments on the wall. Mm, yeah, like a dummy thermostat. Exactly. Nice. Um, an earlier gentleman asked a question in chat. Uh, where is it? Somebody already answered him. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? In a variable speed system with two zones, do you guys recommend to install a barometric damper or not? Good two zones. Two stage? That's what I'm I'm thinking that's what I think. It, I guess it depends on how, how like the percentage of zones, right? Right. Yeah. Well, what, yeah, depending on the zone size. Right. Have you guys ever installed one? Barometric. I hate barometric. Data. Yeah. So same oh, here. Yeah. I mean, I have. They're, they're very okay. common in Tennessee. Yeah. So you, oh, okay. you see them all the time. I, yes. I think um, if if you if you can't zone without a barometric, like doing staged cooling and heating and or variable. I'm not interested in doing it. No, that, it's going to be a freaking noisy system. Yep, and you're going to be going through motors. It's going to be a problem. No. That's know? what. And RJ uh, RJ Dipple of Homeworks Incorporated said the same thing. Well, you know, in in, in Tennessee, where you know they're behind the times, you know, as Joe will <laughs> confirm. Um, <laughs> get out of here. You'll see a damper, not and Shannon can confirm this too. You'll see a damper. You, you'll see a bypass ninety percent of the time. Yeah, because it's cheap. Probably man. more than ninety percent of the time. It's Joe used cheaper. to. Joe used to think that Dukes of Hazard was yeah, a documentary. <laughs> Dukes of Hazard was a documentary. I don't want to hear that it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> what? You guys right. got electricity down in Tennessee now, don't you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't say it. No, Tennessee's awkward. Uh, awesome. Not awkward. awkward. Oh, Tennessee is awkward. That's called. That's a Freudian slip right there. That's what that's yep. called. That's Tennessee. what you want. Sure. Yeah, they, no, they just gotta. They gotta. They gotta mill down on the creek. You know, generates the power. Is that where they like tie a fish line to their the toe creek. and take a nap on the shoreline? <laughs> <laughs> the paddle bolts. All the taters. <laughs> All the taters. Where they, I they come from, Huck Finn them. was my neighbor. <laughs> what are we talking yeah. about zoning? <laughs> where does it come from? I don't know where this came from, but yeah. That's barometric point, is yeah. cheap. That's why they use all the builders use barometric when they're doing those oh, like, right. two floor homes. That's right. Hey, did, did you guys explain what a barometric uh, damper was? And it's a like a damper with a counterweight. With on the, it. Yeah, yeah. Weight. Um, arm with a weight. It's bypass. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to set it up based on airflow, and it will open yeah. only a portion, like crack open, based so on no, the pressure. Yeah, it's no. got to relieve pressure because only one zone is calling or whatever, and it's got more air than what that one zone can handle. The excess air is going to bypass back to the return. Let's mm. all say hello to Justin's wife, which is joining us in the chat. Oh, that's right, Justin, your wife. He's got to look. There she is. Like, yeah. <laughs> Nobody's talking crap. I'm not talking crap. <laughs> she said, oh my Joe God. hates Tennessee and all Southerners and think they're intellectually <laughs> stunted. It's true. Yeah. You know how much hate mail you're going to get? Because people are going to think you're true. Well, luckily we can't write, Joe. Joe thinks he's high and mighty. And he's, I don't. He's, he's above and beyond anyone from Tennessee. So anybody yeah. in Tennessee, Joe hates you. Send him hate mail. That's why I'm showing these guys. 
That's a high mic. You definitely leveled Joe. it out, Joe, showing us your stuffed animals. That brings your humility monkey. out. Now we're on the same level. We're we're on the same playing field because Joe showed us his stuffed animals. Don't we all? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I have we plastic do dinosaurs. There's a big difference. Oh, yeah, that's right. Where are they? Brontosauruses? Brontosauruses and Tyrannosauruses and uh, Pterodactyl. The Pterodactyl that I have is a, is a 1984 Imperial Vintage Pterodactyl. And as far as I can tell on eBay, there's only three for sale. So it's got to be worth something. Yeah. I would See, get my, it for you. My wife's not the only one in here. Look there. There's Adam's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Holy smokes! Look at that. I don't allow. I don't allow my wife to use a computer. She needs a. My wife needs to <laughs> capitalize her first and last letters of her name. I was like, unless you can send an email from a sandwich, you don't get on here. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. They're both in here. They must. They must have texted each other. You know what? Let's get in there. Tennessee, Tennessee is running all, all DC power. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, That's hilarious. <laughs> That's pretty good. Adam's Bill, wife you, didn't even wife care to, here. you know, she, you nope. know why she didn't put the capital letters in because she doesn't care that much about it. She just typed in a name real quick and just said, "All right, I'm just going to go in this chat." <laughs> she would just get on here and say, "That's stupid." Yeah. Why do people watch this again? <laughs> That's do, what the wives yeah. are all thinking. Why do Why do people watch you guys talk about dumb stuff again? I don't know. So back to the pterodactyls. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I need to bring I'll up Bill you. on the screen again. You want to see it and be really impressed? It's the one. Let's see if I can point to it right above my finger right whoa, there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that right an old down. school like White Sox hat right there? No, that that says number one dad. I bought that from a garage sale for myself. <laughs> it was not a gift, no. But I have that. So when people like walk around my house, the few people that I have over, they see that. I'm like, wow, he must be a really great dad. <laughs> Little do they know, I bought it from a garage sale. <laughs> so it was like 50 cents because it's one of those stupid cheap foam trucker hats mm. yeah it's real stupid but so why'd you get it so people would think that i'm a great dad oh if you don't have a number one dad hat then people are just going to think you're a piece of crap piece of crap right or like exactly. lower down or a t-shirt like or or yeah. yeah you know didn't have any t-shirts at this garage sale so <laughs> i had to settle for a hat what are you gonna do life gives you lemons buy a hat from a garage sale yeah I agree. Right there. Mm -hmm. Adam, you got a question in the chat. My oh. question is. No, yeah. He's going to Schaumburg in March. Recommend mm -hmm. somewhere to eat. In Schaumburg? Uh, there's a lot of good places in Schaumburg. You could go to Chicago. There's a lot more. Um, Shaw's Crab House. That's a good one in Schaumburg. Uh, I don't know. There's like a ton of stuff. There's a mall there. Yeah. Hmm. It's not far from my house, so you should come over. I'll barbecue for you. All right? It's a four-hour drive for me. I'll be there. Yeah. Go cool. see Justin and Adam. It's like 20 minutes from me. Um, Are we going to do a small giveaway, guys? No. We should give away some of your stuffed animals. That's with it. That's a, uh, what's it called? Prize? Constellate? No, that's... that's a Constellation prize? Yeah. That's, Con no, we'll, yeah. yeah. Constellation? Const no, like, that's like the stars. The stars. <laughs> <laughs> Not to get back on those, but are those are those TY brand? Uh, the, beanie the Beanie Baby. Beanie Babies. Beanie Babies? Isn't, isn't like the Beanie uh, Baby factory TY. in Canada? I didn't give them our address. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it's in Canada. Mm. and it was like you remember when those were like a big thing like everybody yeah. was collecting those things you're right you're right oh this one's worth hundreds of dollars of all kinds of crap that just kind of faded out that just kind of went away now everybody's stuck with these freaking beady babies that are like not worth anything I think what's no. the only what's what is canada really giving us beanie babies nickelback <laughs> nickelback, nickelback. <laughs> what, else? what is that um, nickelback they give it ever fresh water yeah. ever living fresh water period. Fresh water. What? What are you yeah. talking about? I'm just going to say Cat is giving it to you. It's coming straight up from up north. Nah, we got mountains here that give us spring water. We're going to yeah, give you a trick, Joe. We're going to we're gonna let your rivers run through our country, and then we're going to redirect them north back to you. And then pay us mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. We're going to pay you. Yeah. 
I understand. For the dirty water that we contaminated <laughs> with our pipelines. We'll just we'll just defend your country and all the other countries in the whole world in exchange for nothing. <laughs> and uh eventually Asian carp will make it up to you, Joe. Asian carp, I know. There are f- I think they, they already have a warning for that fit, some kind of fish. I, I don't know if it's the carp or something else. It's, it's a small fish, right? Carp, it's something big, else. They, they jump out of the water and you hit them with baseball bats. Nice. Yeah, if they're killing the other fishes, why not? No, seriously, look it up. It's a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I understand. Yeah. It sounds like a thing. I've never heard of it, but it sounds like a thing. One of the one of the species of Asian carp, they get startled with boat motors if you're mm. in a boat. So if you're driving in a river, they jump out of water. So there's like 100 fish flying in the air as you're driving down the river. And they have tournaments where you could kill as many carp as you can. And people like are, uh, you know, they got baseball bats and nets and you name it. What's that, like the purge or something? They call that... Uh, Hillbilly fishing or something like that. I can't remember what it's called. Of course, it Hillbilly. Is. Of course, it's what it's called. I swear to God, that's what it's called. We're all down here murdering each other with baseball bats in the south. <laughs> These guys in there, they're picking on the south. Nobody's picking on no, nothing. They they never give it a rest. Well, no. just look at what the south has given us. They've given us a lot of cool stuff, like not Nickelback and. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> right. We never give anybody Nickelback. No. no. Yeah, bare naked ladies. Like, come on. They're from they're from Canada. I'm pretty sure. Tragically hip. Know. All I know is I think Keep they trying. sing the uh, Friends song, don't they? There Do you they? go. Shannon. There's Shannon. Shannon makes a good the point. Friends song. Tennessee has goats that fall over dead if you scare them. Oh, Thank those fainting oh, goats. Fainting goats. goats are great. <laughs> those are amazing. I would like to get one for a pet. That would be awesome. You just yell at Dion. Yeah, exactly, Michael. Queen Dion, guys. Come on. Yeah. What the hell? Really? Don't ask. Did we really need her, though? No. I mean, really? Dukes of Hazard, like Chris said, is from the South. Yeah. Pretty cool. That alone is enough. That, <laughs> that, that alone moment. is enough. I guess <laughs> Sammy, we got things. We also important. got the, Dix- the, the Dixie Chicks. No. We don't no. claim them. <laughs> no. Well, they're, Good. they're politically against what we stand for in the South. Yeah. yeah the, she needs to move up north. <laughs> Are they you still know, around? The yeah, they're chicks. still around, I think. Off topic, but it's a good off topic because it's an HVAC show. Um, somebody mentioned <laughs> found the cat skeleton in a blow uh, blower one time. It just reminded me about that picture uh, Adam had. I wish he shared it. But um, did share. I did share it. I, sh- I share it, but Zach only reads our messages starting at eight o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, no, he doesn't. No, no, that's exactly what Maybe I do. He's been yes. busy. He's been in and out. <laughs> I usually read them at the end of the day because I get there. It's like I wonder what the boys are talking about, and be like, seven some days thousand new messages. Yeah, one day yeah. there's like a million messages, and one day mm. there's like four. It's like the day where there's four. I was like, is everybody okay? honestly sometimes i'm like how do you guys even get anything done because i'll have to step away and i'll come back and there's like 987 new messages <laughs> i'm like what are you guys doing all day you, like, you, just, you just glance man you periodic you just, glance i can't do it i like to see some of the like the stuff that's being talked about especially like the contactor relay thing that was funny like there's a whole argument about the contactor is not a relay yeah then, these uh, guys had me fooled you guys i'm saying yeah i'm building a uh contactor relay box like it's not a relay it's a contact i'm like what and you guys all jump. It is, but do you call a heat sequencer a relay? No, you call a sequencer, right? It's true. Right? Yeah, you don't name it relay. Heat sequencer, sequencer relay. Do you do? Do you ever go into the supply house and ask for a sequencer uh, relay? Yeah, yeah, I need a heat sequencer relay. What you if you just ask say for a heat for sequencer? A, a thirst like sequencer. Guys. It's true. You just ask for a sequencer. That's yeah. not even the worst thing. A, can I have a? Uh, can I have a thirty amp contactor relay, please? Yeah. Yeah, contact a relay. Oh. I sometimes, you sometimes you got you, you never know what they're gonna give you. Like so you definite be... purpose controller. I think what a contact is technically <laughs> yeah, called. Never, never like a definite that. purpose controller. I think is what it's something like that. Yeah, I never box. called it that though. No one ever called that. It that. No. <laughs> no. Um. That. But that cat. That must have been a like a big unit. I just don't find it weird how that cat could be like decapitated. Just like by a, with a fan motor, it's just weird. It's like I didn't think it would have that power to do. Somebody that. who hates cats put it in there and like, all right, find your way out. Well, like you said, 
how do you get in there <laughs> to begin with? And if you look at the picture, it, it, I don't think that fan was going when he got stuck that way. I think he was. I mean, up there looking around, and then it kicked down or something. Do you mm. think? Do you think he automatically thought the motor, motor was burned out, or do you think he looked at the big picture diagnosis? On that? I think he looked at the big picture. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta his... warn you because I've already gotten a bill through Square for the first time. Y'all said big picture diagnosis from Chris. He literally sent Chris. me a fifty dollar bill. Oh my really? God. And to my voice? email. It said, oh, "Pay up, well, sucker." We'll start using my slogan: "The little picture diagnosis." Okay, okay, we can do the little. Picture so if he's looking at the little picture diagnosis, he probably walked yeah. up to it and he put his gauges on there, and he's like, well, "I don't know, your pressures are way off here." And he looked inside, and oh, you got a dead cat in the condenser fan. <laughs> yeah, this is your problem right there. We better change your TXV. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a little picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's one hour service right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, God. The funniest thing I seen this week. Ugh. I just emailed that mm. picture to you, Zach. Not that you could change around your whole predetermined show or anything. <laughs> yeah, like oh. our pretty, scripted this, show. Nothing is predetermined anymore. I get pictures in like like the first minute. We need to add it to the yeah. show. Okay. Zach, here's a picture. I wanted this picture up like two seconds before. That was funny. Sorry, can we Zach. like can we automate the show so we could just text pictures to the show and it will show up on the screen? That would be that would be awesome. Do we have that kind of technology at our disposal? We'll have to figure it out. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, it would be cool. On another note, Zach bought a new phone this week. I've had that for like a few weeks now. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's right. That was also <laughs> a part of the discussion. And uh, my favorite part of the discussion is that when I glance back and look, is Joe's blatant ignorance to pop culture. That is my yes. favorite part of the discussion. Yes, yes. Yeah. Movie that is true. Never heard of Tom Cruise. That sort of thing. Wait, wait, you never heard of Tom Cruise? <laughs> I just made that up to show the severity of the situation. We'll make, oh, okay. we'll make like oh, uh, movie movie reference jokes, and, and Joe will be like, oh, yeah? And he doesn't get it. It's a joke because it's from a movie because yeah. he didn't see the movie. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I might be on the same page here with you, Joe. I'm, I'm horrible when it comes to like movie references and quoting actors. Like movies. iconic movies. It's not like the like nothing movie. This is like iconic movies. Joe's like, I don't know what A Few Good Men was. He didn't know what A Few Good Men yeah. was. Yeah. What, what, what I said, I said, <laughs> you want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. And Joe's like, out left field. He got a clue. What I say, uh, what I say, Justin? Trump? What are you guys talking about? Like, I, I, I don't remember what he said. It's 5,200 <laughs> messages ago. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. I'd scroll back and tell you what you said, but that that take too long. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Next week's show, you'll get there. Yeah. If only we had a HVAC overtime chat for everyone. For oh, my God. Time. Then I'll just we'll go to our business. Dude, I'd, I'd have we're to work. Work. we're gonna go our business. Yeah, I would turn <laughs> notifications off. There's your Discord yeah. right there, man. You could do that. Um, I don't know why they why does it do that, Zach? It sometimes erases messages. Ricky Hertz wants to know if you own a television, Joe. Yeah, I told him I do, but I don't watch it much. Just uh, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert yeah. Bronson says, "Can you physically engage a relay?" I guess it depends on if a contactor is a relay. Hmm. Mm. If a tree falls in the forest, shit right there, guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice one, Robert. I like that. Did you know that Kit Kats are made with ground up Kit Kats inside? Did you know that? Wait. No. Is that cannibalism? Yeah. Guess, that's the truth. That's my, that's my guess would be they take like the broken ones in the factory. Yeah, and then they grind them up and that's how they make the crunchy center. Mm -hmm. So how did they make the first one? That was my question when I heard that. <laughs> it's how like did they make that, the very first one. They're like, like, we got the shell, guys, but what do we put in the middle? Yeah. Here, here we go. Just grab this crap up. That's that's like the, um, the Amish droppings. It's the Amish friendship bread. Everyone gives the little pack, and your wives make a bread or whatever. But where does the original starter come from? Where does mm -hmm. you start this thing at? You know, that was mm -hmm. a bad reference. I'm sorry. I like to watch Joe because Joe's like, "What the hell are these people talking about?" Yes. Yeah. He has I, 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 like, I'm he zones yeah, right out. Like, just backs up and zones right out. <laughs> you can always good. tell in the chat when Joe, like Joe, be <laughs> talking to him. He'll, he'll have responses for everything, and he'll be laughing at this and that. And like somebody will make a movie reference, and Joe goes quiet. Yeah. <laughs> so my first response is, "Yeah, Joe, don't get that one." The Chris yep. is wrong, Bob. What? What? And you know what? I come who's with Bob? a stupid remark too, like something irrelevant to that. But it makes sense when you're looking at it. Like like Shannon just said, you can't handle the truth. 
I would think someone's telling me, well, I could have had a little truth. Wait. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Wait, 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 wait. Joe, do you not know what that's from? Yeah, I know. I know what. I don't know. I can't remember the name of it, but mm. I know it's a movie. <laughs> who said it? Tom, was it Tom Interesting. Cruise? What did you just say? Was it Tom Cruise who said that? <laughs> said what? You can't handle the truth. You can't. Oh. No, it wasn't him who said that. But he's in that movie, right? Mm-hmm. He is in the movie. We're getting closer here. Okay. The movie is the same name of that place you go to on Friday nights. <laughs> we just said the name was the funniest part. He's like, what was the name of that movie? <laughs> I was, totally missed it. It was Jack Nicholson. Mm-hmm. Not the golfer. <laughs> yeah. Not Jack Nicholson. Good golfer. I like which, the, oh, Jack which, Nicholson. That's right. I guess in Canada, you guys call it warm hockey. <laughs> warm <laughs> summer hockey summer when the hockey. hockey players are off they play summer mm-hmm. hockey yeah well i was trying to go back in the chat and find some of the stuff that we were referring to but i'm still scrolling oh yeah and i'm just at this morning should we bring anyone in here rookie's getting uh, really irritated with us right now yeah he, he probably doesn't like us anymore he does look Rook, we had got some good we had some good chat, HVAC chat. I thought we had some good ones. We I had to make it fun. This was a good show. We did prepare, rookie. We prepared. To yeah, we had a little, a little bit of the boring stuff with the boiler talk and my amazing story of my oh, yeah. getting locked out of a thermostat. <laughs> and Joe talking about his few good men club that he goes to on Fridays. Few good men, isn't that a movie? Who's this guy? Hey, hey what's up? <laughs> yeah, isn't that a movie? That is the movie we were talking about, Joe. A few yes. good men. Joe, do you know about uh, Feed Me Seymour? You know, I've seen that, Chris. It sounds familiar, but... I... Feed Me Little Seymour. House in the Prairie? Nope. Little House in the Prairie. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Little man, Big Town? Was... No. <laughs> Little Big Town? Oh. No, no, it's not Little Big Town. It's... Oh. Little shop of horrors. Wow, oh. that's where I go on Friday nights. Hmm. That's little shop of friend. horrors. Little shop of horrors. <laughs> yeah, Mo, we heard you got a. We, we heard you got a new tool. Yeah, uh, well, it's not a new tool. It's an old tool, but for me, it's new. I'm curious. This is from. Dar Who's Smith. From? Dar Smith. She, yeah, a couple, right, guys? A couple that watches this. Nice. I think he was in here earlier, actually. What's, oh, that's awesome. I haven't seen him in a while. Uh, it does. It doesn't work right now. Uh, she sent. She sent me these um, battery holders. I have to install them. Install them inside of the unit, that's awesome. and then watch some YouTube videos to learn how to use this thing. But I. For what I see in this, this starter works well to try to unlock uh, yeah. and scroll rotary and recip compressors. <laughs> recip, yeah. Huh. So what does it do? Is it uh, reverse the yes. rotation? Oh, yes. Interesting. Cool. Damn, I want one of those things. Yeah, or you can you just can, use a hammer. Hey, Yama, can, can you take a picture of that later and send it to me? Yeah, sure. It's, a, it's an Annie. Annie. It's an Annie. Yeah. It's an Annie, huh? I've never even heard of that. Yama, yeah, you look real good in a mustache. You're looking yeah. like you're looking if you were if you were wearing a tuxedo right now, I think you'd be like a a, a double agent or something. Like not that. gonna lie, when he came on, I thought it was an old spice commercial we were playing. Rico Suave. Yeah. Rico <laughs> yeah. Suave. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Yama. Yeah, thanks. Thanks to Bill. I was a little bit motivated to let my Uh, oh, very nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't hear, I didn't hear that. <laughs> Can we fill in the blanks, YAML? Or I didn't go. hear that last bit. Hey, thanks to Bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I heard, too. Thanks to Bill. I let my... Danny thanks. started reaching behind his ass. So I, I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> I'm sorry because my internet sucks. Uh, thanks to Bill here, uh, I was kind of a little bit motivated to let my beer and mo- mustache ah. grow. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a series of YouTube videos just about beard care and products. 
how to you know it and keep it straight. <laughs> we got smoke shoot out. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't you know see you your beard because of the clouds. Uh, a lot, a lot of people um, make videos, you know, like of progress, either from when they're younger or older on YouTube, and they they have huge views. You should have did that with your beard, like the process. Oh, I've just, I've always had a beard. I, I don't know any other way. Oh, when you, you, that's right. When you were born, you had it, right? We did that's watch right. that video of you playing guitar. Don't forget that. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that was my uh, cousin. All right. There's a couple yeah, people right. who want to join in, guys. Sure. So I'm going to duck out. Who is who is the least interesting person beside me? Me. All right. Adam's going to duck out for a second. And I will. Why? So we'll come back. My head looks really Let's do one at a time, Zach. Zach, one at a time. What You want one at a time, guys? Yeah. So just me then. <gasps> oh. 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 That's not right. No. Hey. Who's that guy? <laughs> look at Look at I'm all That's clean. Chris. What is that? Oh, why'd you do that? No, I, I had an right? accident. I was trying to trim it. And that's what oh. usually happens with it. And then I trimmed it too uh, far. And then I came out. And my wife goes, I actually liked it when you were yeah. trying. I said, why didn't you say something before I shaved it off? Like. Mm. <laughs> I know, right? Damn. <laughs> no, if I could, if oh, I could, if I know how to work Photoshop, I'd like Photoshop like a beard right on you. That someone here. Okay, someone screen <laughs> Someone screenshot it. Maybe Yamo did. <laughs> Yamo's pretty quick with his fingers on that. No, Yamo. Oh, yeah. uh, if you use that Hermetic compressor analyzer, that'll actually help you a lot. That's a really cool tool. You can't use it on um uh well no you can't use it on scroll compressors. But on a her well, oh, actually you can, yeah, single phase. You can't rock a scroll. Well, I guess you could too, theoretically. But but yeah, I have one of those Annies. I have one that I use sitting up top, right there. That's right. Yeah, that was my first compressor analyzer, and I used that can for years. So does yeah. it work? Did it actually work? Yeah, 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 it still works. All it is 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 like four different capacitors. It has four different start capacitors, four different run capacitors. Actually, no, it doesn't have run caps. But and it just has all the um, the wiring inside, and it's push button for the potential relay, or the current relay, whatever you whatever relay, the starting relay. It's a push button, and yeah, you can start your compressor, and then you release the push button, and you pull the start winding out, and then that way you can. The whole point of that was before we had uh, inexpensive um, three in one start capacitors. You know, you could just throw that thing on there and verify that the compressor was still good before you drove to the supply house to get the starting components. Sure. Mm -hmm. So nowadays, I just use those cheesy little Supco three-in-one start caps, and if it starts, then I go get the right starting components and come back. Well, that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Sometimes that doesn't even work. As it, some, well, something like that trump that. Well, yeah, you can actually um, with that you can you can select a higher value for the start cap okay. too. Like, okay, and you can you can get the thing going, but is it going to work when you put the right ones back on? Right. You know. Yeah. Looking at the small picture. Little you know, picture diagnosis. Mentioned... Oh, trademark. This one it again. Okay. This one only. Already... <laughs> I'm already sent them two. So I'll send them back right now. Oh, this one only has two capacitors in. Yeah. Not but, four. But if you look at it though, are they? Have you opened it up? Yeah. So are they, is there multiple taps on the capacitors though? Mm, yeah. I, I think that you. I think uh, how many how many capacitance values are on the 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 dip switch, like on the Annie? Can't you do a bunch of different values? Uh, well, it has one hundred and sixty slash two forty, uh huh, two fifty slash three eighty, okay. and seventy five slash one fifty five. Yeah, so it's doing something with resistor. Who knows what it's doing, but it does something inside there where you can do the three different. Yeah, features. it's just there to make sure you can get it running. Yeah, so they're cool. They're just big. I don't keep mine in my truck anymore because I don't see the use for it. But, but um, if you still want to use one, they're great. Have I, you guys seen with compressors when they lock up and you you get them the you know rack free? Have you yeah. seen like long term? Like mail. I've never got a compressor to rock free. I've tried it a bunch of times. I never using the analyzer. I would just unwire it and rewire it real quick. And oh, then, that's how I do it. Wire yeah. it backwards. Yeah. And then just kick it really hard while it's trying to start a bunch of times to see if you can get whatever you think is inside. It never works though. It just I I've had it I've had it twice. Have you? The, the last time the lady was literally begging me. Mind you, she had like a new Mercedes in her townhouse garage when I pulled mm -hmm. up. Nice place. It was like a 20-year-old unit. She's like, please, oh, please, anything you can. I'm like, the compressor's not running. 
capacitor was bad. All right. So I changed, replaced the capacitor, still not started. I'm like, uh, eh, not so good. So I put one of those three in one, you know, uh, Hard yeah. starts with the relay on it. Yeah. yeah. It still didn't start. I'm like, I'm going to try one more thing. She's like, I'm going to go inside and pray. This is what she said. She's like, I'm going to go inside and pray right now. So I, I, I flipped the wires and I started it. And then I turned it off, you know, flipped the wires back again. And it, it started up. It freed the compressor up and it started running. And I'm like, this, I don't think this is going to stay running long term. Okay. <laughs> this is like maybe a month or two. This is not going to stay running long term. Yeah. Um, so literally two months later, she she calls me. The, her her condenser's not running. Same thing. I tried doing the same thing to get it going. No. I'm like, sorry, you need a new one. She left us the worst review online. Like, These guys only know their repairs only last for two months. Beware oh, of this company. Geez. I'm like, yeah. I told oh. you that. I told you I recommend replacing this unit. You know. But whatever. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I wish you could answer it back. You were gonna go. You said you were gonna pray. Like, have, have well, you guys I, I answer it back? I did. Have you ever um, gotten the joy of firing a customer like to their face? To the mm. face? I know. Yes. It sounds amazing though. <laughs> yes. So I, was, I was at a bar one time, and it was like a a COD call. So like, if it's oh. not a normal customer with us, where so we tell them you're COD, you got to pay me cash when I'm there. You know. So it was like for an ice machine. It was like a dive bar. And the customer, you know, I got there and um, it was a really dirty ice machine and it was in really bad shape too. And I remember telling her like, you know, this machine, uh, there's not a whole lot I'm gonna be able to do, but even before I can even start diagnosing, I got to clean it. It's going to take me about an hour and a half to clean it, you know, and, I, and it's, it's, it's a tiny bar too. So I'm literally behind the bar counter. Like, so all the customers are looking at me, watching me clean this ice machine and the lady's standing there the whole time. And uh, I cleaned the machine and then I think it had a bad compressor or something. I, no, it wasn't a compressor. Whatever it was, though, I remember telling her, like, you're going to have to replace this machine after I was done or something. And, um, you know, she proceeded to, like, berate me in front of her customers. And I remember getting such joy out of turning around and just saying, you know what, just, yeah, I'll be, yeah. but just laying into her and telling her, you know what, lose my number and just go fuck yourself. You know, <laughs> nice. and wow. just walked out the door right in front of all of her customers. And, you know, I it, it was worth the three hours of my time, basically, just to be able to tell that to her. To her. And I don't think anybody ever told that, you know, to her. She was just kind of like, excuse me. And I said, yeah, just lose my number. I'm out. Just walked out Good. the door. Listen yeah. to the Chris swear is almost like listening to Captain America swear. I, I don't think <laughs> I've say bad words on this channel. That's why I held that back. But then it slipped. So my bad. This is overtime. And it's got to be past nine o'clock by now. This is when the, you know. Yeah, but did Zach mark the channel safe for children or not safe for children? Mm, good point. Those of you guys with the whole YouTube stuff right now, we're getting yeah. like OPA laws or whatever. I mean, well, there's only okay. one potential child that I think would watch this channel. Did hey, you not? Rookie? Rookie? What? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm teasing him because he always jabs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I met him. So yeah, he said he took a picture of you yeah. with you. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, he's he's much taller than a toddler. Yeah, he looks tall. He was sporting Bill's hat too. So mm -hmm. awesome. Um, He's gonna be my new hat model when I, when I go live. <laughs> Speaking did of which, go ahead. I was gonna say, um, I did that impromptu live stream last Saturday night, and one of the people that came on was like a nine-year-old kid. I was all, uh, <laughs> you had a couple kids come on. <laughs> really? Yeah, I missed it. Damn. Yeah. Um, I, th I heard that the guy Greg, he was here. He said he was on. He's he actually admitted himself. He's a young kid, isn't he? was, but there was like a nine-year-old kid or something like that. But I mean, it was cool. Serious. I was surprised. I didn't know. I, I was, yeah. I was fine answering his questions. Like it was cool. He had genuine questions and that was cool. But I was just like, oh, okay. And then I'm like, am I going to get in trouble for having a kid on my live stream? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Was that, there's that Greg was like 20 ish. Okay. So maybe there's like, what's that other dude's name? Random guy. Yeah. He's like oh. what, 15 or 16 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. There's a few of them. I get a few people in my comments. I mean, I like that. I'm just worried about the whole YouTube thing now. Am I going to get in trouble for having kids on this? That dude came out. He was on a hangout with us, like you know, a while back, and he was talking about how he takes his, <laughs> takes apart, he takes apart his mom's furnace. Oh, it, it, I someone similar to that. I don't know his name, but emails me and and like was asking me questions. I'm like, I've no got, way. I've got a circuit board and I'm trying to wire it up, and I'm like, oh. uh. 
Yeah, or because because I think I think I again I'm not knocking him, but he was asking me how to wire up uh, a furnace board that he had from someone's furnace, and he's trying to hook the. I think I don't know what he was trying to hook. Twenty four? No, he was trying to hook the power. He was trying to plug it into the wall or something like that. And I was like, dude, that's a twenty four volt furnace board. Like you need a twenty four volt transformer. But before I realized it was a kid, you yeah. know. And then and then he sends me a picture. He's got like a, a DC. 24 volt transformer for like a laptop or something like that. I'm like, what are, uh, yeah, you need to talk to someone. Like I didn't want to, right. Help if something happens to the kid, they're going to trace yeah. it back to you, Chris. Exactly. Like, oh, that yep. Scary. <laughs> that is scary. Jeez. But anyway. rookie almost went flawless on his refrigeration test or class. Cool. 98.37%. Right on. Okay. Awesome. Well, am I taking someone else's spot, Zach? Is he still in here? He's 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 hovering. He's in the chat. Zach says, he's... "Do better next time." Cool. <laughs> Do better next time. Oh, not even for, yeah, that is not good cool. enough. Yeah, you're right. Oh, no, yeah, you're right. Cool. I guess I had to look at the chat to see. I'm gonna guess Michael is waiting. I could be a guess. Uh, Zach. Zach said nobody's waiting. So. He said, oh, okay. Hey, Chris. Somebody, I think, uh, what is it? TJ Ward up here posted a question to you. Oh, I wasn't watching. It says, was I worked on an ice machine years ago with top head drops through the bottom, both Hoshi machines. You ever see that? Uh, I think I know what he's talking about. He's talking about a like a Hoshizaki stackable machine. So it's a horizontal machine with a compressor on the right, and you stack them on top of each other, and the top machine drops straight down through the middle and drops down to the bottom. If that's what he's talking about, that's all that I can think of of a Hoshizaki drop. through. I've never seen any in real life, but I think I've seen them in – Probably in one of your videos, actually. Maybe, yeah. They're they're not. I mean, I don't have any stackable ones anymore. But it is if it's a horizontal machine, like it's really wide, that's a stackable machine. Mm. So you can stack another one of those on top. You just take the top off, and there's a little panel you pull out, and then the ice will shoot down through the middle. Seems, I guess, yeah, I'm probably wrong here, but it would seem to me if you have ice dropping through one machine, don't you run the risk of maybe lodging an ice cube in that bottom machine somewhere where it shouldn't be? Um, well, the way that the stackable machine is designed, no, because there's panels that block the ice from falling into the bottom, but uh, the bin thermostat, you have to have an extra long bin thermostat for the top machine, and it runs all the way down through the bottom and then goes down into the bin, so you will actually have two bin thermostats down in the bin. Um, oh, okay. Actually, I'm, I'm going way, I'm aging myself because Hoshi doesn't use the thermostats anymore. They use like a paddle sensor, but um, now, yeah, this use a bin thermostat. Is this double because there's a double compressor stack machine, or is it just because two separate machines for capacity? So you can have two, like gotcha. well, you can have two 2100 pound machines. So you can have you know four thousand pounds of ice basically on a bin. So gotcha. hmm. yeah, they're they're cool. they're interesting for cleaning, and then also you're up on a six eight foot ladder to get to the top machine. And if you ever <laughs> have to change that 175 pound compressor on that top machine, it sucks. Yeah, nope. It's fun stuff. <laughs> Two men and a genie lift. Yeah. And, and a cup. And a cup. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's a little bit much there, bud. <laughs> you ever watch that, Joe? No. Oh, you, you have a that movie? Oh, we got oh, reaction video time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Video. <laughs> Is it okay if it's demonetized for a month, Zach? <laughs> Uh, Sorry, I took uh, Yamo off there. I wanted to answer the two girls, one cup question. We will not be watching that today. That was disgusting. But well, you don't have to show no, it. We you don't have to show it. On, we just yeah. want to go to do a we reaction. Want to see reaction. Yeah. We just want to see the oh, is, the, is it the one that they boo in the mouth of? Yeah, well, okay, he's yeah. seen it. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. They, they do what? They boo in the mouth? Is the the same, yeah. <laughs> We're talking defecation. Why are you talking about defecation? <laughs> Why it's are you whispering? <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, yeah. make it politically correct. You're not supposed to whisper on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> on the mic. You're not supposed to whisper no. on the mic. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's, should... that's what that whole... Um, <laughs> hey, Justin. <laughs> Adam, that's that's where that whole uh, Discord thing would come in. As for when you were, like, the private chat and the videos and stuff in, like, a Discord server. I don't think you'd get in trouble for that. Mm. Can you explain yeah. that? Actually, I got drift of that in the chat. Uh, uh no i'm not the person to explain it someone is trying to get me to set up a discord server okay. and i'm confused on like how it would benefit me i, I get the un I, I, they explained it to me so i understand it now but it just it's a whole private server that you can do whatever I, you want and 
it, what's funny is I, I like somehow I downloaded it. There was like a link. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden on my phone, my phone was like shut off. And a thing popped on the screen of my of my phone. It said, Chris, HVACR videos is on Discord. I'm like, what? So I click it. And then all of a sudden I'm in there. Me and you are talking to each other. Oh, <laughs> you were already part of that room? I, I mean, I must have been. I downloaded the thing or whatever, but I've never done anything with it. And then all of a sudden, it, like your icon showed up on my phone. Oh, see, because um, well, I can. I, it was it's Jeff, the maintenance man. He he has like a Discord server, and one of his buddies had invited me to check it out. I think that's how I stumbled upon it. And then um, I was on there, and then so yeah, I'm I'm on there talking to him, and they're like explaining how this thing works, and I'm like confused. And then all of a sudden, Adam pops in, and I'm like, hey, what are we were talking about? <laughs> It's all new and confusing to me. I had to call my little brother who's all like into computer games and stuff and was asking him like, how would that benefit me? And he's like explaining it to me. He's like, oh yeah, it'd be awesome. And I, I just, it sounds like Chinese to me. Yeah. So does it benefit you? Like what's the purpose of it? Just to talk. It would be a right? private chat. So for me, I was thinking that because I want to do something. And again, I don't know how this would work, but I want to do something for the people that signed up for memberships for my, my channel. And so mm-hmm. I could have a Discord server where even if I set up a Discord server, I can have a private section for members. And then you can do video chats. You can do voice calls. Okay. So I could answer questions. Again, I haven't done anything. That's just what I've like, talked about. Oh, yeah. I, I got an idea for your, gotcha. your, your channel winners. What's that? And get, send them an invite to the overtime hangout. And they could all just come in and chat with us all day. <laughs> 4,900. Yeah, yeah, their phone will be blowing up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you want me to? You guys, you guys want those numbers, huh? You know, I only have 200 people in the live stream. So, Oh, but I guess I, I think all the members have all been from the live stream. So I don't, people haven't clicked it when they're watching videos yet. So Yeah. Rookie's ever sleeping up against his wall. Ricky's in his, his he's, sauna he's in again. The sauna. Yeah. He's angry, <laughs> he's angry today. <laughs> You're right. Man. <laughs> I was just trying to be happy. It's because exactly. there's seven feet of snow at his house right now. That's why in California, when we get snow, you lose all internet service and everything. So. Sounds gotcha. like a transformer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had Thanksgiving. I got snowed in for two days. Hour. Hey. Can You're you frozen. say transform and roll out, Ricky? <laughs> You're frozen. We don't hear you. Roll. Yeah. <laughs> I got Thanksgiving and uh, snow days. Oh, really? Days. Yeah. 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 You're like frozen. There you go. You're moving now. Or not. All right. What I said is I got I got frozen in for Thursday and Friday with no power. Wow. Really? Nice. You know, when you said you had snow, I I was thinking, you know, just a light dusting of snow up there. Wow, he got crap. No, we had over two feet. Damn, oh, that's nuts. Crap. I'm still eating cannolis. I made a bunch of cannolis for my <laughs> family. <laughs> Couldn't go nowhere. Just surviving on cannolis. It's good that you <laughs> That's to pretty much what I did. It's a good thing. You I actually there. had chili dogs for Thanksgiving. Have that was my Thanksgiving dinner. dinner. Was nice for your family when you were snowed in, huh? <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> no awkward times to spend with the family. That sucked. Are you getting snow right now? No, just rain. It's okay, supposed yeah, to snow, though, I think right tomorrow now. night. Tomorrow, yeah. All, for all you non-locals, we're having Armageddon here because it's raining in California. <laughs> Calling the army. Yeah, pretty much. Hey, Shut down the road. hey, when it snows or rains out of here, nobody even knows what to do because it only happens twice a year. So, yeah. yeah, you're right. Freeways yeah. get shut down. We don't know what salt is or anything like that. They just shut Ooh. our down. I you guys even have, actually ever. have salt, or are you guys? No, no, no. They, they just shut them down. Yeah, they'll do it every once in a while. If it's not bad, they'll do gravel, which is just horrendous because oh, gosh. gravel the roads. Oh my god! Mm. Yeah, of where I live, they they put this like red sand. It's called sinew down. Yeah. when it snows, but all it does is fuck up your car because it just throws big ass clubs of mud all over your car. And you should come yeah. to Michigan. All our roads feel like gravel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, and what it does too, because again, here in California, when we have potholes um, on our concrete freeways or anything like that, all they do is fill them with asphalt. So when oh, it yeah. rains, Cold the asphalt floats away, and then we have giant potholes everywhere. So our freeways are all full of potholes right now because it just rained. Nice. Awesome. Wow. We got smart people here. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like it. Wasn't Jesse Ventura your governor? Oh yeah, was he? We had, no, 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 we had Arnold Schwarzenegger. Jesse yeah. Ventura was the governor of Florida. No, 
He was a governor of somewhere, well, but not California. We yeah. had Arnold. Yeah, it was in California. Wasn't Maybe yeah. Minnesota. Minnesota, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that just pops in and then runs out. That's funny. Jesse the body of Yeah, he's yeah. an interesting dude. He yeah. is interesting. Yeah. Conspiracy. Yo. Conspiracies. Hmm. So I'm going to come out to Chicago and you guys have to teach me how to work on these boilers. So I at least sound educated when you guys ask me questions about them. No, it's, a, <laughs> it's a dying art. Nobody cares about boilers no more. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's so tons Bill, of right? boilers around Bill. Bill yeah. like, lives in boiler area. It's very true and I know nothing about him. It's sad really. Welcome to, Bill, welcome to the club, Bill. I mean, I, I have Bill, a boiler I think in you my take- house. Yeah, I think you should take the boiler out of your house. Get rid of those radiators. Get a real I'm heating system. Adam's, Adam's working on a heat load calculation for me. If I ever get him the rest <laughs> you of never it. sent me the rest of the. Oh, there you go. Sorry. Oh, yeah, you I want to talk it. about mid efficiency, high efficiency? We can bring that up, actually. Go That's ahead. Yeah, yeah, I've already oh, got There we go. 80 and 90% again. <laughs> actually, we'll talk it for next show. That's a big That's topic. It's an in depth. In I feel like you were a part of this the way you said that, rookie. <laughs> yeah, I know. He knew a lot there. Hey. How did you... I didn't know hey, that. you know, I just took a class on it, so I had to pay attention. Oh, oh that's what we're, we, we've been arguing about on chat, this little chat, 80, 90 efficiency, which is it worth it, blah, 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 blah. And we're, like, all giving different answers to Bill. Mm-hmm. Anyways. 90% is not worth it. It's more of a pain in the ass. Bill, I'll stick with I'm, 80 every day. I'm disappointed you got rid of the exercise bike. <laughs> oh, I just moved it. Yeah, Chris, I've been asking him for two weeks where he put the bike. I still, I again, I'm sorry, and, and not making fun of you, but I still envision a scene from Bruno whenever I see the exercise bike. Bruno. You got the Sasha, the Sasha Baron Cohen movie? You know, I can't I say what was going on, but there was an exercise bike, and it was maneuvered to where things were moving whenever the exercise bike was, mm-hmm. was riding. Yeah. I don't know if, why I thought of that. If I had one of those exercise bikes, I would be in the best <laughs> shape ever. I'm talking six pack, <laughs> you know, broad shoulders. No, um, no, no. It, it, oh, I guess I, I guess I guess I can see what you're saying. <laughs> kind of. Maybe. That's all we're gonna go with. So we're not gonna ruin this show with that. But just Google search Bruno exercise bike scene, guys. It'll we already uh, ruined the show. Don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry. I yeah, I'm lost too. Ask uh, rookie. We rookie, did that with our rookie. epic open. <laughs> the funny thing is, rookie coming from up there, or I guess west. What do you say, west there? Um, we don't even we don't even allow eighty efficiency anymore up here. Like it's not even allowed. They're like against out. Code. They're yeah. kicking out down here. Mid efficiency right? gone. You can't even have a mid efficiency. I want to add that with you guys. You're not even allowed to install those anymore here. Why? It's just uh, saving energy, saving gas, saving the natural gas. I don't know. It's Bill, have you, not gotten, have you not gotten all the emails? Are you getting people from like Europe and Australia watching your videos yet? I think I'm getting some. I'm, nobody's emailing me though. Okay, so you'll start getting the emails of people saying that, you know, everywhere else but the United States, it's oh, illegal to top off a charge. Actually, yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. I just got a comment, not email. I just got a comment saying, hey, uh, something about... Uh, it was when I used that tracer gas to find a leak in one of my yep. train videos. Yep. yep. And they're like, hey, you know, um, I like what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. But if you were to do that here, you get fined like 25,000 squiggly yeah. L mark. I'm like, I don't even know what that dollar <laughs> sign is. Squiggly L mark. <laughs> yeah, what the hell is a squiggly L mark? You have to use Google Translate to yeah. tell you what squiggly L like, So it's like, so what, 80, 80, Euro, 87 yeah. bucks? Yeah, no. Um, and, and I get comments from people quite often saying you can't charge, you can't. Um, yeah, all kinds of weird restrictions that the United States, you know, doesn't have. I guess in in Europe or whatever, like R twenty two has been outlawed for fifteen years or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. There's a, it's it's really crazy. Like now, now that I'm starting to get exposed to some of this stuff from overseas, and it's it's crazy that uh, we're I don't know if I want to say we're so far behind. We are. The curve, when it comes to regulation, are, yeah. which I guess is good. Right? I mean, uh, I think it would be better for all of us as for companies and for employees to create that law where you can't top off a charge because like how much work yeah. would it create you know yeah oh, well i saw something going over around facebook this is a good topic too i saw something going around facebook today from one of the people that works for um esco um uh, jason obju obju i think is his name anyways he posted like a link to something talking about all the new restrictions and all this stuff and i i quickly glanced at it and it's like oh wow 
So on one side, I'm pissed off as because this is going to be a pain in the butt. But on the other side, it's a money making thing. Like it's going to everybody's going to be busy because they're basically banning every refrigerant and we're going to be going out and they're going to be outlawing every. I mean, that's what they want to do now, whether or not it'll pass any, you know, whatever. But but yeah, it'll keep people busy. I mean, it depends on which side, which way you look at it. So, you know, and while I got you, Chris, going back to what I was talking about, I know I've read it somewhere that you can use a certain amount of tracer gas. I couldn't find any information on actually uh, that specified in EPA regulations quoting or regarding the amount of tracer gas you can use or, mm -hmm. but I, I know I've read it somewhere that. Um, yeah. I remember, I remember it on my EPA test. Like you're allowed to use a trace gas of something. Now what the, that number is, I don't know. Yeah. The way that I look at it is, like when it comes to de minimis loss and all this different stuff is, is I got to do everything. I, again, I could be wrong, but I'm going to do everything in my power to take all the gas out of the machine. But here's where I have a hard time. I have a Appian G5 twin recovery machine. If any of you guys use that recovery machine, you know that that thing holds about half a pound of refrigerant in that machine when you're done. Yeah. <laughs> Get it out of it. So when I look at a machine that has six ounces of gas, what's the point? It, it's gonna it, ha, it ain't gonna come out of the machine like there's gonna be so much of it left in there yeah you're just no? gonna pull any recovery machine and then blow it out the it's gonna be all in the i'm gonna make yeah. it to the tank like by the time or, or how about your neighbor is just dumping it into the jungle that's weird eh we dumping have all these roofs dumping it in canada yeah <laughs> uh, so <laughs> everything goes up right so it's cool man joe you're mm -hmm. good now we'll just send all that crap up your way Here's okay. another debate we got into months ago, and I'm questioning because I don't think it was any with any of you guys. It was other people on YouTube. But so when you guys have your, you know, your manifold and you leave a unit, if you have low loss fittings on or whatever, mm -hmm. do you blow your hoses or yeah. do you, you? So do I. So do I. <laughs> well, oh, OK, so this goes back to the compound gauges. It ruins your gauges. Right, but the little chingus in, yeah. the compound gauge. If you leave refrigerant in there, it ruins that that chingus and it makes it out. okay. That's why that you constantly had to zero it out in the beginning. You don't have to zero that gauge out as much. Also, also, I, there is some systems that are so nasty. Yeah, that, like I wouldn't want to put that on. Yeah, I'm not passing that on to somebody. Another else. System. Yeah, it's another system. No, I, I, I take everything out of my hoses, but I don't I use think, those low loss. Any, I'm sorry, Joe. I use no, the, no. All that sure. one. I, I blow it in you yeah. know the high side into the low side and then I have four ounces. Well, either way, that's what I'm uh, the yeah. same like yeah. same idea. Ball yeah. valve, you know what I mean. Sorry, Joe. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say I think anything to keep under pressure is bad for anything, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad for your now. Let me ask you guys this. Okay, so you have a drum of four ten A and uh you've used everything you can out of it. There's still, you know. 15 ounces left in it or whatever because you can never get all the refrigerant out of a 410a can it takes forever do you hook up a recovery machine or do you just open the thing and let it go open it up and let it go same same yeah I'm, but I'm the, going to get a disc. yeah i mean you know i, I again i'm probably not going to put that on a video but you are thank you yeah <laughs> let me do it <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really wondering this whole i i mentioned to bill or i said it in the chat that i'm working on a video right now and i'm really having second thoughts about posting it but i did a uh people have been asking me for a long time about r290 and a lot of people are afraid of r290 and they put 134a in instead of r290 so they'll take out the r290 and they'll just put in 134a and uh so i happened to come across an r290 unit and i uh um, was able to remove the charge. So I got distracted by Bill's thing that popped up on the private chat right there. Okay. But um, yeah, I took all the R290 out and I put 134A in it and I have the whole process. Like I videoed it and I took amp draw readings and superheat and stuff and I'm watching the whole thing and I was very surprised with the results, but I still wouldn't recommend it. But I'm contemplating whether or not I should put that up because I'm probably going to get some backlash for that one. But Technically with R410 with the tank, if there's no liquid left, you're not supposed to use the remainder of it technically yeah okay i understand that but if you're putting it all in the same system right i get what you're saying but, but if yeah. you're using it multiple systems and you're at the end of the jug you yeah. know what i mean and there's no you're technically not supposed to use it yeah i guess so. but i mean has anyone they, they also when r410 came out they said you would not be able to top off a charge because you're not it's not going to work properly um because yeah but it, it, 
that's right. Yeah, they've debunked that. The, the whole fractionization, um, I think the, the term near azeotropic applies to 404, 410, and basically you can leak out almost all the charge and recharge that thing. You'll never have a problem with 410. And same thing goes. But in the beginning, we were when 410 was, you know, slowly emerging in the mid 90s, and everybody was like, "Oh my gosh, you got to recover the charge. You can't fix leaks. You got to do all this stuff." And it was. Just, what do they say? It's like 80 or 90 percent of the entire charge has to leak out before the actual. Uh, dude, I've topped off a lot. I've I've not so much with 410 because you have to recover, but especially with 404, I've had yeah. systems that were like so low because it has a receiver. You just fix, you pump it down, fix the leak, and then just fill that receiver up. Never had a problem. Mm -hmm. Or ten though you 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 obviously got to recover it to fix the leak because you don't have receivers on that most of the time. But but yeah. Anyways, I like our twenty two. So do I. Actually, you know what? I bought a drum. We can talk pricing on here, right? Yeah, oh, all right. yeah. yeah. sure. Bought, bought a drum today for three eighty. Wow. Mm. Just shit with RSD, Chris. Ten dollars cheaper. That's where I got it from. Three eighty, I think. Three seventy. Three. Mm. No, it's three. Yeah, I paid three seventy three. I yeah, it was, yeah, it was right there. I feel like it's cheaper here for some reason. I At the end like, of the summer, I think it was around three hundred by us. Yeah, yeah that's why I think it's like two eighty to three hundred. I've seen it advertised for. Well, our RSD is our local. They're they're not our only local supplier, but they are a really good supplier. But in all honesty, they do have um, higher prices than a lot of the different supply houses. But what they sell you is their experience you know they got clean supply houses the bathrooms aren't nasty they don't smell like crap you know they're 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 but their prices are a little bit higher than everybody else hmm. but, right but their counter people are awesome though when yeah. you need a part they always have it yep i always go to rsd first this is my first stop i'm gonna have to send them a bill for that one too because i just give them a big ass <laughs> plug i got two bills that went back i'm gonna send a bill over to rsd yeah. so you should tell people to say something when they went there Chris sent me. Chris sent yeah. me. Yeah. I'm Chris, mother. Give me some money. Yeah. Give me some money. <laughs> and hey, speaking of that, weren't you, uh, weren't you going to do a giveaway or something real quick, Joe? Yeah. I want, before you sing the giveaway. I thought you were going to pressure me into a giveaway, Bill. We're going to give away this sticker. Uh, Zach said, thanks for joining Chris. No. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. <thanks. laughs> That's cold. <laughs> no, no, no. He's saying. But you guys see it, so it's funny. It's Although, funny. Chris, I do want you to get a picture with uh, Mr. Dick Wurz, get an autograph for me, or a book. I'm not asking for autographs, but I'll get a picture for you. Yeah, even if it's a picture of like him eating lunch, something you just kind of sneak. <laughs> real, real <laughs> sneak a like. picture of him. Dude, I go on after him on the, the whole conference thing, so he's, I'll be he's, up, he's, he's opening for you. He's yeah. your opening act, huh? Yeah, right. I'm I'm closing the show. That means everybody's already going to be left and there'll be nobody there. So, Are you the last speaker? Yeah, I am, which is very awkward. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. Everybody, everybody yeah, thanks, Bill. Everybody yeah. else, the <laughs> speaking engagements, there's like multiple people speaking at the same time. Wow. And then and then mine, I, now watch, Brian's going to watch this. He's going to say something to me. But mine is at the very end and there's nobody else speaking. So if everybody stays, there's going to be 220 people watching me talk. I heard you might get everybody I, leaving. I heard, yeah, you, are, gone. I, I heard you and Brian are fighting these days. Is that true? No. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're going to do a giveaway because we're just yeah. going to a hangout territory here. Take over, Joe. Well, really quick. Chris, what day are, are you actually speaking on? Saturday. On Saturday? Friday, Saturday. So I'll be speaking Saturday. His event goes Friday, Saturday. I speak Saturday. The last day. Awesome. All right, I'm rambling at this point. No, it's all good. No, it's all, good. all right, so people uh, should know that. Yeah, Joe, what kind of what kind of giveaway are we giving out, guys? Like, how are we doing this? You're top dead center, Joe. You figure it out. Yeah, no doubt. How many people are left in? Uh, let's see here. Oh, I got 55. 55 people watching. 55 right now. How should we do this? What do you want? Chris, to you can give us some uh, some. Uh, what's you gonna ask me for prizes? <laughs> no, no, no. That's why we let you in here. Yeah, yeah, Chris. What are we giving away this week? I don't know. Let me, let me, let me I on. believe it's a fifty dollar gift card to True Tech Tools. I believe it's a good price, right? Guys, right. you with me? Yeah. Hmm. So, Is that well, true? What I don't know what you're talking about. Let's play with my. Oh my too. god! <laughs> yes, Joe, you're correct. Fifty dollar okay. gift card to True Tech. How do you guys want to give this away to these lovely guests we have in chat? That's, that's on you to decide. You're the one that brought it up. Uh, 
Yeah, this is totally a Joe thing. Hmm. I'm thinking of a number between one and ten. Yeah. 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 I don't want to do like a Seven. random. <laughs> yeah. It was I don't want to do a random robot chat thing. <laughs> I don't know. Um. Yeah. That's a, I don't know. I've only got movie quotes in my head. I <laughs> oh, got movie quotes in my head. Good thing Joe's not playing for that gift card. Oh, that's a good point. I'll just leave. I <laughs> would never what, get it. What's movie that movie quote? again? Planet oh, of just, the Lambs. Just, not to get off topic, we're still doing the giveaway. Stay on the giveaway, but yes, yes, I, remember, yes. I just remember one of the things that Joe had no idea what we were talking about. Oh no! I referenced something in the chat. I said I'm just gonna go live in a van down by the river. He had no. Oh yeah. Idea. Yeah, no idea. Listen to this guy. Um, you know, I answered back. I answered this. I go, yeah. I go, Justin. Times could be rough sometimes. You're right. I agree with you. Yeah, he's like, yeah. I mean, he's like, imagine Justin and his family sleeping in the 18 van down by the river. I'm like, no, no, you. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> that was funny. I gotta admit. That was. But you joking. segued into that whole social media thing right now that's going around with the whole creeper vans. You guys seen that crap? No. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, Human there was like a rumor, and then something about Boston or the mayor of somewhere, somewhere crappy, went on and said, "Watch out for like creepy vans that white that have puck locks on the side. Uh, they're linked to human trafficking." And now they're they was on the news like uh, all over the place that people like are freaking out about it, and you know you'll be driving down the street, people will just be running away from you. But... Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> um. So anyway, what are you doing for the giveaway? Yeah, I think. Don't get off the um, Yeah, you're right. Um, Joe's easily distracted. Yeah. yeah, I think we all go off topic. All right, listen. If somebody – I'm going to say a movie quote. If somebody could finish the movie quote in the chat, first person to, to post it in the chat, how about there you that? Go. There you go. Go for it. I guess it's a general question. Anybody could get it, I guess. Well, I hate I hate to say this, Adam, but the they chat moved to different lags, so we had a problem with that before. Okay. But you're doing great. Keep trying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hand to Bill. He's going to show us how to solve a Rubik's cube. <laughs> there you go. Mm, um, yeah. So what we, got, we, we got lots of views. Okay, Bill. Oh, that was funny as hell, Bill. I got to say, dude. What's that? With the whole Rubik's Cube bit. Oh, my. That seriously was awesome. I, I should have let you keep going. I didn't realize you were going to solve it because I would have just let it be dead air watching right. you solve it if I knew you were going to do that. I thought the best part was no, just no. seeing your password was Unicorn Princess. That was pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs> oh, jeez. That was awesome. Right, it, I, I'd say we could again, but I don't think there'd be a surprise, but it still would be funny. Yeah. Do it sometime when nobody's expecting it. So what's the movie quote? Yeah, what is it? Zach said no. Yeah, Zach said no. <laughs> what's the movie quote? Um, There's a lot of thought behind H- this process. I know, HVAC related or it's just random chat? I don't know. Ask a, a, ask a question, Joe. A really tough hey, question. Hey, Joe, will you get us an HVAC yeah. related movie quote? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to put two... Yeah, that's easier. Yeah. That is like one of the easiest movies. things you can do. There's like the most popular movie from the 90s. Die Hard. One of the biggest memes. Yeah, the Die Hard scene. Which meme is attached to that? Die Hard because now. Like, what kind of static pressure is in one of those ducks that he's uh, he's crawling all over or something? Joe installs duck work that you can how come? How come the inside of his duck <laughs> gets true. here? Are super shiny clean. There's no dust on the inside of Bruce Willis. Like when he's climbing through there, it's all nice and shiny. Like someone polished it before he got in there. Oh, that's they good, probably that's did. That's a good point. Yeah. There's no screws. How come he's like sliding across yeah, the coat? Yeah, that's he's another one. Yeah. Stomach up. All right, oh. here's here's the movie quote. Somebody finish it. Yippee ki yay. No, that's not nice. No. Oh my god. No. <laughs> What's oh that from? Oh my god. That's enough. Zach, help me out here. How are we gonna do this? Oh, you're doing great, Joe. Yeah, oh. What was your primary awkward. idea? I'm confident it's that you're exuding through your skin is perfect, man. Not awkward at all. You were looking for an HVAC no. movie, which there are so many. Look at everyone's really? my my quote, my uh, question in the chat. They don't. Yep. I say you have to ask a question, have them pop on here real quick to answer it. I think that's probably better than. Yeah, you can, yeah. You can kick me out. 
No, Chris. We're kicking Bill out. Yeah, oh, you can okay. kick me out. Yes, I got to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Bill's got to get up at the crack of dawn. He has, he has to go do whatever he does. I got to work in the morning, too. So do I. But it's only 8 o'clock here, so. Stop I'm arguing, Chris. I'm going to, to class tomorrow. <laughs> All right. See you later. Peace out. Okay, see you later. Bye, toodles. 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 Toodles, toodles. toodles. toodles and noodles. Toodle day, yep. day, day. Thanks for coming, bud. Okay. Hey, thanks for going. All right, you got a you got a great movie, Joe. Of course not. You don't know any movies, so someone no. else. He doesn't know one. a single one. What's your favorite Ernest, Canadian Ernest movie? Ernest goes to camp. Ernest P. Whirl. <laughs> Ernest goes to camp. No, I don't think that's gonna cut it. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Weekend at Bernie's. Come on. Bring somebody out of here. Who wants to win it? Yeah, that's be a spontaneous thing. Just bring him on, and then. Say the movie quote. So you think once people are on, the movie quotes are just going to pour forth from you? Is yes, from okay. you, from me, for from me. <laughs> one of you movie jocks. Well, I can do yeah, a lot. They, hey. they ain't going to pour out of Joe. No, I'm just going on with the ride. Poor rookie's already here, so he's like disqualified for being already yes, here. That's... Early, the early bird loses the worm. Of course, he did say your show started to suck, but he wasn't <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I mean, and he also for a while we discussed it. I don't know what. <laughs> hey, you know what? We've had a long week, rookie. Yeah, <laughs> he's not here anymore. She, don't don't attack him. He's not. Here he's anymore. in chat. I know, but he can't defend himself. Oh. He also said movie quotes are lame. He's continuing to be Ray <laughs> 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 Rookie, rookie, rookie. No one's clicking the link. No one wants to do this anymore. All right, nobody wants. Uh, to yeah. give All right, it. Zach sent it to me. $50 gift card right here. Do we really need to send it to Adam? Somebody no. click the link. It's a $50 gift card. You know what you can get with that? I don't know. Something for $50. Half a core remover. <laughs> How much is a core tool? I mean, it's you like can probably find a bucks. shitty one. Yeah. Appion's more than that. Yeah. Yeah. But regardless, I mean, even if it's more than 50 bucks, okay, you get a core removal too. And what you had to pay five bucks for it or whatever. Yeah, there you go. There you go. It's good old Michael. Michael, Michael Blimpco. Michael you, you were asking about my beard, Michael. I, I accidentally trimmed it. <laughs> yeah, you trimmed the I, shit out of it. I, I was trying to shorten it. I had to go do something fancy on, uh, Thursday, I had to go film some videos, and I um, made a mistake and trimmed it too far. Been there, man. So, and then I and then and then I said earlier that when I got out, my wife goes, "Oh, what'd you do to it? I liked it." And I'm like, "Cause she's been wanting me to shave it." And then she told me I kind of liked it. Yeah, mine oh. won't let me shave mine. So, yeah, although mine wasn't really anything other than just some black fuzz on my chin. So, yeah, it was coming in nice. Okay, don't sell yourself yeah. short. My beard was looking good. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Damn you guys, they make me feel. <laughs> <laughs> so well, are we gonna test mike all or what all right Joe, give him his question bro oh i don't know oh, let's just skip over that right now okay yeah uh, go around to the next yeah. guy <laughs> hey, what's, what's your favorite kind of movie bimco oh it don't matter really uh ones that don't suck uh you like rom-coms what you're whatever. saying yeah, i mean if it's good oh why geez, not? Okay. <laughs> I don't prefer them, you know. What about what about like corny action movies? Oh heck yeah. Actually we got a like the expendables Kung, or something. Kung Pao. Kung Pao. Legend of the Fist Kung going Pao. in the back right now. All right. That was abominable. No. Was that saying? She's what? watching Abominable. Abominable. Oh. <laughs> Some cartoon movie about an abominable snowman. So Obama's on a table. I don't know. All okay. right. I'll give a quote. Are oh, you man, ready? I this is an e one. All right, yeah, go for it. Okay, never mind. Can I do it? Release the beast. This, I believe, is easy, but it's an old movie. It's from the 80s. That's old. Born in the 80s, man. <laughs> Let's try it. It's a classic. You got to get all, all right. three of these. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you get $150 if you get them all right. Are you standing uh, on sure. one leg like you're supposed to be? Okay. Uh, <laughs> over here in the back. All right. <laughs> uh, Chris will like this quote. Ready? Go you for go. it. Let me think. It, they say, sir, do you think we're taking them too literally? No, they said comb the desert. We're combing into the desert. Oh, yeah. I know what it is. That was the yeah. excellent. Zach, you can't win. I know. It's not like that. <laughs> I feel like a winner because I've seen this movie. It's not. It's uh, good that you guys know it. Oh, that. Oh. So it got Polly Shore in it. 
no, 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 way before that crap. This was actually funny. <laughs> hey, yeah. Biodome was good. In the Come Army on. Now, that's correct. No. In the Army Now yeah. was funny, but no, this one's not that. All right, I'll give you another chance. Ready? No, no, no. he's got to get it, man. Come on, Adam. We got to give him some know. hints. I don't know, dude. It's a Mel Brooks movie. Hey, there's somebody I, else waiting. Yeah, I have no idea, dude. Okay. I see you. Let somebody I, else go for it. No, no, <laughs> man. You give it a try. Come on, think about it. Oh, you, man. I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. <laughs> we got Schwartz merchandise. <laughs> I used to work with a tech, and he would just spill out all these random movie quotes and look at me like I was crazy when I couldn't remember <laughs> what it's from. Yes. And, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm alone. With you, Joe. I'm, I'm with not you, man. alone. <laughs> I feel you on this one. I have no okay. idea. All right, I'll give you. I'll give you another one too. I'll give you another one right now. Okay, this is a corny action movie. Okay, the movie quote says, "Define irony." A bunch of idiots dancing around on a plane to a song made famous by a band that died in a plane crash, and they were listening to Leonard Skinner's "Sweet Home Alabama." I don't know, dude. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like, just want to talk with him. Yeah. Well, well it, nobody was joining. I figured I'd, I'd go for it. <laughs> Actor movies, and that's like the one of the best scenes too, because uh, Nicholas Cage is in that one. Does anybody else know that one? Was it Con Air? Yeah. Yeah. Yo, Clint said a quick time. Oh, well, I gotta turn <laughs> the damn chat off. They're tattle tales. I helped them anyway. Oh uh, yeah, I didn't even yeah. bring it up. <laughs> I gotta turn the chat Forgot. off, chat people. So just usually I pull the YouTube to the other screen. But I kind of like a bag of tag. <laughs> yeah, hey, y'all go for it. Man. Well pronounced, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> now wait a minute, Shannon. Were you was Shannon guessing Blazing Saddles was the movie yeah. in the desert? Because it's not. It was a different Mel Brooks movie. So it was too late. You can tell him now. It's just yeah, I, it was Spaceballs. Spaceballs. Oh yeah, I yeah. do feel kind of bad. I didn't get that one. <laughs> I am ashamed. Well, oh well. Take your shame time. and go. Yeah, see you later, Michael. There you go. Good seeing you, bud. Bye. Later. Toodles. 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 What's hey, wrong with hey, that guy? Hey, wait He's a second. Back. Speaking he... of toodles. Hey. No way. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are just jealous you didn't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Rick? All right. When people ask you how are you doing, I mean, how do you respond to them? I'm just fine, or do you tell them you're stupendous? I mean, you just got to come up with something to make them think what, you know? Yeah. Often I give, sing my you response. Give the old how do you do? How do you do? The, the old yeah. how do you do? You can do anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Keep it interesting. You do that in Chicago? Yeah, right. <laughs> how do you do? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still doing movie quotes? Yeah, yeah. we are. All right. Okay. I think Rick is locked and loaded, bud. I got one. I don't know if he'll get it. Like, go ahead. But I got one. Okay. Once that first bullet goes past your head, politics and all that other shit just goes right out the window. Uh, I have no idea. Military movie. Pass. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Mm -mm. I, you know, that was a very fitting question from you, Justin. Well, <laughs> I, know mil I know military movies. It's Black Hawk Down. Uh, that's cool. It's a good movie, though. Give him another one. If <laughs> we give him another one, <laughs> <laughs> we, gave, we gave Michael a couple. So we're gonna get All right. This, is, this, okay. is an, this will be an easy one. Well, it should be. <laughs> that's Before. awful, you know, because if he doesn't know, it's like, I'm an idiot. I didn't know the yeah. it, it is, and I'm 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 joking. It's it may or may not be easy, but the the quote is "Excuse me while I whip this out." God, it's only been used a million times and drops. Uh, yeah, I remember that. What one, you, though. I cannot remember the movie though. It's out. it's a Mel Brooks movie. A different Mel Brooks movie. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. That one always makes me laugh. Or, uh, well, okay, this is an easy one. <laughs> does, does anybody speak jive? Oh, I, I jive. definitely know that one. Mm -hmm. God, oh, I speak jive. Like, we got to show old her. old lady did it. Yeah. Show her face too, and then she starts talking to. What's <laughs> up, the blood? How's what, it what going? Those guys, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, on that plane. So the basketball player. I I want to say it is that she starts speaking jive too. This is him. This is a this is a bad. I picked a bad day to start stop smoking crack. 
<laughs> I gotta watch that movie with my kids. They're probably gonna think it's cool. All right, I got another one. All right. <laughs> every man dies, not every man really lives. Oh, I like that one. I know that one. I don't know that one. How about this? Every man dies, not every man really lives. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, what is his name? Um, you don't have to tell the movie title, but um, is it Seamus? No. What is his What is his name in that movie? Uh, William okay. Wallace. Okay, it's William. Okay, I was thinking it was something different. You're right, though. It is William Wallace. Yeah, that's right. They could take our lives, but they can't take our freedom. I know that. Braveheart. It is Braveheart. That is Braveheart. Yeah. Braveheart. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get my era there, man. You're getting all these newer ones. <laughs> hey, the previous one was Braveheart too, and the previous um, one, was Airplane and Blazing Saddles. Airplane, so, I've seen a million times. You speak jive as the airplane, and then Blazing was Saddles it. was. Uh, excuse me, while I whip this out. Oh yeah, uh, what's his name? Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was in that movie. Yeah. Uh, wasn't there a, a, a spot on Airplane where the guys like? With emotion, takes off his glasses and he's got like another pair of glasses underneath it. <laughs> that sounds uh, I think something. it was. You hear that? Roger, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> and don't call me Shirley. I remember those. Those were good. You guys are on it today, man. Well, <laughs> Joe is so impressed. I don't even remember this many movies total. <laughs> Roger, Roger. Wow. So I think he won. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. see. Because it took you 54 tries, you only get a $2 <laughs> gift card. <laughs> it was like five dollars each time you missed. Yeah, I feel like wow, we should give wow. rookie ten dollars of it just for sitting through this. <laughs> Is he sitting through it? Oh, yeah, he's still God. there. Or give him a question too. We'll give away two gift cards. We'll give All him right. a question. Let's too. do that. Let's All do right. that. All right. Well done. You need to email right. the show. HBAC yeah. survival. I What's just that? email Rick, the show. Zach email so he can send you. <laughs> Okay. over time at gmail.com. Bro. Have the dog email me as well. Real quick. Back. What's your email? HVAC shop talk at gmail.com. All right, or gotcha. gotcha. I was just watching your video. I was telling these guys about that generator. Yeah. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of Sorry, guys. That's my dog. <laughs> so- no, that's my freaking dog. <laughs> <laughs> so Rick, they didn't want to replace it. Why th- go through all that trouble? Like, uh, no replacement. Well, basically, I mean, generators. I mean, we when we go to the class, they teach us the electrical side of things. They don't uh, really cover the motors. And then for me, like my brother-in-law is a engineer that also did motor repairs when he was going to school to be an engineer. So I actually ran a few things by him, but. Yeah, you could rebuild the motor, but when you're buying all that stuff individually, I, it, it adds up super expensive. So you figure at the hourly rate, you can swap the thing out quicker than you can trying to rebuild it. Plus, I'm not a motor guy. I mean, I'm a you know doing the electrical side of things, but mm-hmm. I posted it just because I do so many different freaking things. Yeah, it was a cool video. Yeah, yeah. it was long. I mean, an hour and hour and a half, I think, was what it was. What can I do for you? He did that in high school. I who gives a shit? Nobody cares about your brother. So anyhow, <laughs> oh, wow. she comes in here. Everybody just goes out on this show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she she was that that was so crazy. fluid. It was Rick, fluid. It was the most couch, fluid thing. Dude. It's like, hey, hey guys, how's it going? Hey, bitch, be quiet. All right, guys. What you say? <laughs> Get in your cage. <laughs> you know, right now, that was completely. <laughs> inappropriate rick shame on you so oh shut up whatever yeah. let me <laughs> let me bring her on and we'll do a show together how's that on you. i knew it was gonna be good as soon as his opening live was he took his one earphone off he's like what can i do for you <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the same line that like mcdonald's people give you what what do you want yeah. <laughs> i just want to eat some food man <laughs> Good. Oh, yeah. Epic. Oh, epic. Was good. That was epic. We bring out the best of people on this show. Yeah, I admit. <laughs> <laughs> so you all can see when we're in that waiting room, not just Zach. No, only Zach can. No, can. only Zach can. So how did you know I did that? <laughs> what this? The what? The one ear one the one uh earphone. Oh no, you're still on the oh, show. Yeah, you're oh, sorry. Oh, no. Yeah. 
Oh, oh, I did it earlier too. But yeah, oh. I just yeah. Just, this is like a habit like, of yours to take your earphones off and you have people Rick. around you. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> there's always somebody nagging when you try and run sound or something, so you just kind of get used to it. I know people knock on my door all the time, and I'm sitting here running the show, and I have to hit the mute button and kind of go back and say, "What the hell do you want?" and then come back. <laughs> you're like, "I just yeah. want to see if you're still here. Did you see me come down?" You know. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you need the little light outside the room that says on the air. I know. Yeah. I want to yeah. get one of those lights, but they probably just walk in anyway. The favorite, my favorite time where Zach was talking to his son and he kept his son. Kept <laughs> yeah, I know what it's going to be. Show, and he's like, I'm about to push you down the stairs. And <laughs> what I can't remember what else you said. And he's like, <laughs> that's, that's murder. murder. And, and he's like, like it's, it's not- only murder if you die. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, Zach. Oh, he lived. It's, cool. it's all right. Yeah. Okay. yeah okay. That's, that's a couple good. sprains. You know, it's fine. Yeah. That, yeah. That reminds me just, just the banter right there of the, the famous banter that Ted pointed out about, um, oh, damn it. I just had a brain fart right now. When <laughs> uh, Isaiah's dad yelled at him. Oh, one time. Yeah. Oh, like, my God. He <laughs> really enjoyed God, this video. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man Ted was, you can see, I didn't even watch the video all the way that far but I went and watched it after Ted kept pointing that out oh, that was yeah. hilarious dude you had to find a spot it was 23 hours long so you had to find yeah. a spot <laughs> yeah. the, the best part is they put it on YouTube they don't care oh, it's just, and just it was okay but my dad talked to me like that sure I mean, that, that was well, like, yeah. god damn yeah. it pick up your goddamn feet I'm gonna kick you out you know <laughs> tough love I don't yeah. think there's anything wrong with that. No. You know, no. in fact, I what I do appreciate about that is that his dad doesn't change the way that he parents or anything. He just he still parents the same, doesn't treat him any different, you know, just just like a normal person. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That's fine. On that note. Yeah. That note. Well, Let's end this. This has been well, a good hey, show hey, for hey, sure. Hey, rookie's still waiting. Yeah, we'll bring rookie. Oh, in. Really cool. oh yeah. Okay, fine. Bring rookie in. Rick, Rick, Rick thanks for coming, buddy. Yeah. See you, Rick. Yep. Thank See you. you Rick. See ya. Hey, toodles, Rick. Toodles, man. Toodles. Toodles, 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 toodles bro. Toodles. Nice one, son. You don't want to forget, you know, because that's rude not to say goodbye. Chris, do you know why we're saying that? Toodles? Yeah. Yeah, because Rick okay. said it on the show. Yeah, I was watching. Okay. okay. All, All right, guys. Think of this. I got a giveaway. Last week's show, so, right? That was going to test questions. We're going to give you something. Can't remember. Wait, was wait. Let's, let, let's hear them out first. I had got a Milwaukee demo driver I was going to send to you, Zach, but I can give it away on the show if you guys want. Let's do it. Let's give away your stuff. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so so the first one to post in the chat, how many stuffed animals Joe has on his little shelf there wins the driver, and I'll pay for the shipping. I have to turn it back on. Hold on. It's on now. Wait a minute. Like, now or earlier? Right. Well, you got to go count your bunnies, Joe. Go turn My your camera. Tell? Hey, go turn your camera off and count your various inappropriate things you own. Yeah, you're, you're, you're... <laughs> I have a monkey. Your monkeys and your pink pigeons and all that stuff. <laughs> Hurry up, man, because they're going to be guessing a whole bunch of numbers. Guessing all kinds of numbers right Stand now. Up. Go no, clean up your crap. animals. Uh, count how many you got. There's I numbers know. from four all the way to forty-six right now. Do I count Rookie, if you know if, Rookie, if you know the answer, put it in the chat. I just want to confirm Dude, it. I come on jeez. Does Joe know what <laughs> he's supposed it. to be doing right now? I think I know what it is. What do you mean? I think I know what it is. I, I hope you, all you gotta do is count them. They're on your show. How many are yeah. there that you can't take the time to count them? Are there hundreds and hundreds of them up there? But there's one more there. Are we counted that one as well? All, all of them, from, man. Oh my all god. Of them. From the all Joe, you're, you're just us Italians here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. It, that I, I said it in the chat. There you go. What was? Holy it? crap! Now let's go back and see if anybody said that. Oh, Ooh. what did you say? What was it? It's in the chat. It uh, is. Uh, it, I see. Someone does say it. Yeah, Heat Master. Heat Master. Yeah. Yeah. HVACR Heat Master. Why is my chat lagging so much? Heat Master says huh? five. He's correct. Yeah. Inappropriate level one. So he has five times the appropriate <laughs> level of those beanie babies. The correct answer is 4.5, so he got that right. Because 4.5 half is still in there. But yeah, okay. Anyways, yeah. Don't make this complicated. The man. Oh, no, I'm just joking. It's the same guy. <laughs> All right, you have to it's email the show and Zach forward me on my email the address and I'll send it out. I will do it. I will do Thanks, Ricky. That's awesome. 
That's Sorry right. we stuck today, rookie. Yeah. It's all right, man. You, I guess you can't always hit a home run, right? <laughs> get, I, I love you it. I'm trying over here, rookie. You know, we can't all be to your standard. I'm it's sorry. It's a sack fly tonight. <laughs> Yeah, you, oh. you, you and Joe need to become friends. Okay. <laughs> you guys would work out great together. <laughs> well, we're both Italian, so that's why yeah. I'm like, he's disrespecting us. Looking like a pedophile. <laughs> You're playing with his little toys. Italian oh pizza eating pricks. <laughs> <laughs> that was another funny thing. You should see what they said, rookie, in the chat. Uh, Justin, what'd you say? Uh, I was I was saying something to him. What'd you say, Justin? Let me, you remember what it was? I don't well, we'll in all context, don't make Justin look that bad. Yeah, Joe. For the last like two days, Joe has been <laughs> negatively talking about. Oh, something. just make me look bad. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> true. Okay, go ahead. He's been go negatively ahead. talking about Southern people. <laughs> no, oh my god! I'm gonna Absolutely. send him a Confederate flag. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So finish the story, Explain yourself, Adam. Joe. Explain Joe. yourself. These guys are lying. I, we we bicker back at each other all the time. All right. Do we? Do we, we Joe? Do. We do. <laughs> and then Justin said something very offensive to us. That was what did I say? I, say? I can't remember. Try to look. Yeah, it okay, up. it did happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's only five hundred messages ago. I know. <laughs> I know. Jeez, oh, I know. God. I know you're. You memorize it too. See, I would send the uh, driver to the show, but I know Adam has an issue with sending out even stickers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> snap! Dude, I forgot about the sticker again. Snap, crackle, pop. <laughs> he sends oh, me only crazy. only Justin's and yours. When, what, when mine's, not, it, what, mine's not good enough now, rookie. Oh, it's oh not. man, you know it's printed on like. I won't get paper, the answer right? from him. Do not get the answer. When I gave away prizes on your guys' show, I made sure to ship them out that night just because I wanted to show Adam up. So I know. <laughs> we got him like the next day too. There you awesome. go. That, that matches. See, you yeah, see name, if I give it, I'll send it out Monday. Oh, look at the screen. Joe, look at your YouTube <laughs> screen. YouTube. <laughs> what do you mean? Look at the you screen. Got YouTube pulled up. Yeah. Look at the screen on YouTube right now. Not the Hangout. Hold on for the Canadian <laughs> live. Thanks, oh my goodness. That was good. That was good. I gotta admit, that was good. That was good. I'm trying to get this. <laughs> oh trying to get this thing. I can't you got find me it. That time, man. <laughs> oh, sorry. This minute you did that. Hold on. There you go. No, I was just showing this the the inline um what is duct, here? the floor we were talking about. I have that. Was it before that or after? That was before that, right? What's that? I am pretty bad at sending stuff out. Let's be. We're well, talking about induct. Um, I gotta well, say, um, in your in your defense, Adam, all those uh, again, I I was just messing around, but all those screwdrivers I sent out, I just ordered them from Amazon and had them directly shipped, so I didn't have to package them up and send them out. So that's, yeah, uh, everybody got them the next day. Yeah, like yeah. I think Susie said she got hers on Sunday because like I shipped it out Saturday night and it was like next day delivery or something. So, oh, that's a good one. Y'all y'all remember that commercial? That Which Icon one? and Susie's talking about. I don't know. Maybe there's some other conversation going on here, but that. Bob, we had a baby. It's a boy. Remember that commercial? Oh, oh. I'm not that smart, Michael. Joe says Sorry. Yeah. In your chat. Hmm. Honeywell, uh, I missed it, man. Too bad. He anyway. said you are a pizza eating prick or something like that. Uh, uh, something else. Oh, uh, yeah, something else. Said, there was a couple other adjectives before that. Yeah. Hey, you Guido, wop eat pizza eating prick. <laughs> Go back <laughs> to Rome. That's something along it. those lines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that was only after he had said 15 different things bad about the South. Get out of here. <laughs> That's absolutely true. He was slamming the South. Hey, you know what? Fierce. No, nope, no, nope. Zach wasn't there. And <laughs> what the, the I worst part, a couple uh, thousand rookie. chat messages. This is true. <laughs> the worst part though was he said I was a pizza eater. I think that's the worst part about it. Call me right. pizza eater. A boot it. Wow. Italian a people like pizza. We love it. Okay then. Well, yeah, I was I, just, love, I, I love pizza too. Magnifico. Yeah. I think you love everything, Adam. I think you would take offense to it. <laughs> that's, pizza that's why he used it. He wanted to hurt you. I wanted to hurt you. I knew pizza was near and dear to your heart. I know. 
Are you? Did. Are they calling you a, a Guido Wap again? You Guinea? Yeah. Guido Wap. <laughs> guinea. That's good. We forgot that. One. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. This wrap so- the show up, Greaseball, so we can get yeah. out. Of here. Go ahead. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We don't talk back, like I said before. So tune in next week. A toodaloo. <laughs> toodaloo. Oh, yeah. Toodles. Everybody say toodles. 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 Rag at him. And bye. Do, 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 do. <laughs> mana, mana. Do, 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 do. Mana, mana. Do, 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 do